are you are you someone who believes in like evolution? No. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. I know. We, let, let's drink alcohol tonight. You gotta show your butthole on the internet. Two things I would love to do. Crying, masturbating. Oh, I do, 100%. No way could I do that. Maybe a little bit got in my mouth one time. What does your rich life look like? I think I would like a, a house on some land. I want a couple kids. Why would you do that? I don't know, man. Do animals, ha do do insects have wieners? This is a wild podcast. I feel like we talked about nothing but a bunch at the same time. Hey guys, and welcome to a new episode. Before this begins, I want to say that my dumb ass forgot to press record on this camera. So for this entire episode, we only have the two side cameras and the amazing audio. So it's going to be a lot of jump cuts. We thought about cutting the whole episode, but we're like, no, unless we do and I don't use this clip. I don't know. So we're either going to jump into it or this clip never existed. Okay. Go. What are we doing? What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Don't Be Sour, friends and family episode, Joe Bop it a boopy, and this is don't look at my notes, bro. All right. It's it's that's so rude. Okay. Like, would you if you went to talk to the I say the president, but you you have all your thoughts about the president. If you went to talk to the president and you had notes and he like was like leaning over, would you? He does have notes. What if you would you look at the president's notes? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh this is actually one of the last episodes you guys are gonna see in this studio, but I'm or I'm, ever. We're quitting. Is no, it? no, no. I'm I'm moving, but I don't think people actually know because I'm gonna make this studio look the exact same. So ideally, yeah, they will know. They're gonna look. I I I I feel like I should get rid of this table, dude. This is a five thousand dollar restoration hardware thing that I never wish I bought. I have some bad news for you. Well, it's now like a hundred bucks. Yeah, like you're gonna get offered like five hundred bucks. No one's giving you five grand for this. You'll be lucky to get like eight hundred dollars. Forty five hundred dollars. No, no, I'm I'm moving. I gotta sell my dining room table, and like all the offers are like fifty bucks. I'm like. That's so annoying, bro. Yeah. By the way, this is my third energy drink today. That's not good. What's your What's your threshold on caffeine? These have 200 milligrams a piece. So I, I do a coffee in the morning. I want to say my, my Vinti coffee yeah, dude, bro, is bro, 150 you, milligrams. Hold on, hold on, what? hold on. What? I, I've lived with Joe and you are just like... Oh, you take two sips and put it down. This isn't like a sexist thing. You're, you were just like all the girls that I've ever seen in my life who obsess with Starbucks and just like with Taylor, drinks half of that every day and then leaves it into condensation just goes down. Okay. Assuming I drink the whole thing, that's about 150. Mm -hmm. Then I usually have some kind of energy drink, probably another 150. So I'm at 300 yep. and then pre-workout. So and you take pre-workout some days. So some days I think I'm probably at like half a gram, half a gram. Is that how Who that works? Says that, milligram, dude. 500 milligrams, half a gram. Yeah. No, I, I don't normally drink three. I just really want one right now. How much is in that one? 200. So this would be 600 you're, in total. You're at Right now I'm at 400. You're at 0.6 now I'm at, grams. Now I'm at 402. You should go to a, a full gram, 1,000 milligrams. Bro, Nabil and like Christian and all them, like yeah. a lot of editors, uh, they just like will drink like 10. Well, you build up a tolerance. Like if I do this every single day, then eventually I got to go two of them. Let me ask you this. Yeah. I know it's not good, right? And I'd, I'd say around like 400 is probably like the cap of what most people should do based on studies or something. But could you actually have a heart attack if you're just like, I'm going to have 15 energy drinks today? Like, could this drink kill me? I mean, caffeine can kill you. Because caffeine uh, constricts your blood veins, I think, right? And that's how it works. I don't know what it does. I think it's a, a di diuretic. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I think it's called like a diuretic. It, it constricts your blood Diuretic flow. is the word you're looking for? I think for? so, yeah. That makes you poop. I don't think so. Diuretic makes you poop. I think I that's think the point of a diuretic. What do you think? What do you think X-lax is, bro? Uh... A diuretic. It's not a diuretic. If you take lemon, lemon, if you take lemon, Jack, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. But I think that's right. It constricts your blood. And I think if you have a heart issue or whatever, like your heart, your heart speeds up to counteract the fact that you're getting less blood to your extremities and it makes everything go faster. Did you know if you take a lemon and squirt it in hot water and drink it, you will shit. I don't buy that now. I, I promise you. I'm I put not. lemon in my cold water all the time. No, no, no. It yeah. has to be hot water. Okay. Because of the science. And you put like half of a lemon and you, it, it's a natural diuretic, meaning- I don't think that's the right word. All right, anyway, let's get to the good stuff, dude. What are we talking about today? Well, for, first, I feel like we should talk about Joe updates. What's what's the Boom. updates with you? I was just on this bitch recently. Well, no, no, no. You were on in real time, but this okay. is coming like th four weeks uh, after. I that. move tomorrow. Tomorrow I get the keys to my apartment. That's the big update. 
Still not making any YouTube videos. Coding all day. Really bored. The date we're filming this is June 22nd, so, by the way. So by June 25th, I will be fully moved into a high rise and living like a sheep. A what? Sheep. What does that mean? I, mean, I don't know. I just always associate like people live in town. Like if you live in the city, you're like a, like a sheeple. I, isn't sheep like you follow the masses and you do yeah. what everyone else does? Yeah. Now I live in a building with 300 other people. Now I've asked you this yeah. multiple times on all the episodes. Do you have any regrets? No now regrets. Not even a single letter. Now that um, the house is sold. No, I think I'm good. I am having a little bit of concern about the Senna's late night pee that's schedule. Your, that's, your, that's the dog. Yeah, my dog likes it to, uh, we do two walks a day and mm -hmm. then we do a little playtime in between. And then there's like a couple pees in between, which is fine. But there's typically like a 1030 I need to pee before I go to bed. And that's going to be a little annoying in an apartment because like 1030, I don't want to have to. Right now I can open the back door. I have to put clothes on. I'm fine. An apartment, I got to like put shoes on. Can't wear boxers out there. It's going to be a little bit annoying. We're, we're, we're going to see. We'll, we'll figure it out, dude. Joe's new apartment is $6,000 a month. No, it is not. Yes, it is. If I didn't have concessions, yes. But with my concessions, it's like, it's a lot. It's it's more money than it should be. Break it's down how it's not $6,000 a month. Because I got two months free plus half another month free. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. But those two months are up front. No. It's spread out? Yeah, they spread it out over 15 um, months. I did a 15 month lease. So they mm. took that, spread it out over the whole term and ends up being, it's it's much lower. It's like half of what that I, I think that is such, like they do that just to get you. Like, like they're like, this is originally $6,000, but if you sign right fucking now, then you can get two months free and we'll spread that out. So it's 3,800. And while you're like, why don't you just say it's 3,800 or something? No, because it really was. It's uh, not though. They're is, making it, it up. No, Andrew, our friend Andrew used to live in this building and he Andrew was paying $6,000 a month. No. Dude, that High is- rise, Andrew. That is so, yeah, but he was living like a penthouse, wasn't he? No, same unit I'm in. What? Yeah. Why would you spend that much money? I'm not. So the issue I'm going to have is at the end of 15 months, they're going to ask if I want to renew it and they're not going to offer me free months. So it will go up to that full price and I'm going to have to get out of there because I, I refuse to spend that much money on rent. Like I'll spend money on stupid things, but like that's a lot of money on rent. That's that's pretty stupid. Some of the stupid stuff. Uh, any new cars? Uh, No, still waiting for my Raptor R. Still a, a Dodge Ram owner right now. When you when Okay, so you have the TRX and you went to buy the, the Raptor. When, yep. did you, when, did you, when did you buy the Raptor or like put your deposit down? I was one of the first orders. When my was that? My order went in... Uh, November of last year, and it went into production January 7th. How do we see them on the road, Joe? And Mine got pulled. So initially, when they first went into production, they had engine issues. They pulled all the ones that were already built, put them in a lot to wait for new engines. When they got new engines, they just kept building the ones that were on the line, and all of ours are just sitting here waiting. So ours would be the last ones off now. So it's on a lot. They so there's a bunch of them. Yeah, for six months, that black truck has been sitting in a open field in the sun with i'm sure the paint's gonna be fucked. no it probably has like, those like big white stickers all over so, it dude i'm assuming i'm gonna get this truck and it's already and they just released the facelift yesterday so there's a whole new model coming no out. no way yeah. oh my yeah. god dude, new front end new back end new screen everything's new Bro, heads up display now first of all i hate the heads up display dude call the them and display. tell them to you want the I, new i'm one. trying to i told them i'll buy this one but i only buy this one if they give me a new one i'm gonna trade this one for that one so i'll buy this one i'll trade it in for the new one do you ever feel like a lot of times like the people are out to get you specifically? Cause like, why are other people getting the truck, but you don't like, for example, this, this hurt, this was because I'm a little asshole and I got mine first. If I wouldn't have fought them for the first one, I would have gotten it by now. Cause it, everyone that ordered it later got it. That doesn't make any sense because the first couple were the ones they had to pull off the line to address the engine issues and they oh. haven't put them back on. So they're going to let these wait until everything else is done and then put them back. I think there's still a possibility that someone at Ford just doesn't like you it's kind of like, like these God. podcasts, I've done a lot with you. And first of all, people always like will, will mention that I like bleep out your curse words. It's because Joe no says f the F word like every six seconds. No, I don't. And I'm trying not to get demonetized. This podcast doesn't make very much money, but like I'm trying to make whatever money I can. And episodes, like episodes with like Steve Cook, Oz, my, yeah. you know, my fil old filmer, uh, freaking... Random ones will get demonetized, but then like Joe won't get demonetized. What, like, I don't understand. People are out to get me. Dude, the fresh and fit one got demonetized and I bleeped out every single curse word and like womanizer slur in the whole episode. I'm a strong believer. The automated thing isn't what's getting you. It's like, it's employees that are pissed off. It's like your video, people that don't like the fresh and fit guys reported it. And then 
whoever reviewed it at YouTube was probably like, oh, I fucking hate these guys. And yeah, it, I feel like if, that's what's happening here. If people don't know, your your YouTube video will get sometimes automatically flagged as not appropriate for all ads, and you'll get a yellow little dollar sign, and that means you get limited or no ads on your videos. Basically, it and then that stops the growth, because why yeah. would YouTube push a video if it's not going to get ads on yeah. there, right? But then you can go in and be like, I would like to manually request a review. You can't put like notes or anything. You can just be like, it's, I think you're wrong. Yeah, I think you're wrong. Yeah. Manual, manually review this, and people, and then you'll get, and then you'll get a like an alert sometimes really fast, sometimes like the next yeah. day, and it's like we've manually reviewed this, and it's still not fit. And I'm like, you sat. Have any of yours been reversed? Like any no. of the ones that you've asked to be reversed? No, you're just getting bad luck. You're no one. Like I, that- I think the jazzy podcast one, uh, the jazzy one we talked about like OnlyFans a lot. Yeah. But then I did an episode with Claudia where we talked about OnlyFans, about why she didn't want to do OnlyFans. Can't do that. And it got demonetized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to show your butthole on the internet. Otherwise, Bro. Otherwise, you're not cool. Oh, my God. Dude, okay. Yeah. S- speaking of showing your butthole on the internet, we got to talk about, we got to talk about Alpha Land. Okay? Let's do it. Because 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 this, this place is, first of all, amazing. Yeah. Okay? Christian built something that I think is unlike anything else, but it's getting a little out of hand sometimes. It's a little too popular right now. I it's d- not even. It's it's not only too popular. It's too popular with a very specific demographic of people. Explain. It is very popular with the seventeen to twenty three year old influencer hyper better yourself need to document everything in life crowd. Everyone in that gym has CEO in their bio. Everyone in that gym has twenty five different fucking YouTube accounts where they're teaching you how to be a stock trader or whatever. I I promise you. The number of broccoli hair haircuts out there, <laughs> wild. Well, dang- Everyone's got young LA, young LA. There's gold chains everywhere. There's dangly, sunglasses on. Dangly like, cross earrings, dude. Bro, it, and and you got to watch where you're walking because you. It's like oh, I'm gonna go use that bench. I'm walking through three people's videos. It's like why? Just work I, out. Just work out. Yeah, but okay, home. okay, okay. It, it's it's a double edged sword, bro. Because this place was designed to allow all yeah. of that. And, and I guess like we do go during the more popular times, but we were at five yesterday. That was yeah. And it, and it gets ridiculous. And we obviously quit. we work for ourselves. We can go whenever. So it's really hard to complain. And, I, and I'm not trying to complain because again, it's like, I do the same thing, but I guess it's like, it, it's just, it's, it's a unique experience because when you come to this gym, any given time, there will be 15 tripods in the gym. Like yeah. I, I'm not talking about like little handheld ones. No, I'm talking setups, full extended 65 inches. Oh, like my penis. Everyone's mic'd up. Oh yeah. Everyone's got wireless mics on them. And the, they will be, the, I've seen multiple people like the whole workout, they're live streaming that, that and, shit's wild. and they'll carry yeah, around the yeah, tripod yeah. while they're live streaming, just talking as they're well. And again, it's like, I don't care what people do. People making their money, but it's just, it's a, it's a spectacle to see. I, I had this conversation the other day. You think the whole, like, okay, I see like live streaming while working out and I'm just like, that's not cool, but I want to use a different word, but I'm not going to. But do you think that like there was stuff that I did when I was like 15 that I'm sure my grandpa was like, that's not cool. Is live streaming like talking to your audience while you're working out? Like, is it just because I don't understand it that I'm like, that's not cool? Or is it actually just really lame? And we're going to like in a couple of years, everyone's gonna be like, nah, it's pretty lame. No, I don't think I, I'm not talking about how it's like it's not I don't consider it lame. Oh, I do. hundred percent. You're talking to a phone like asking them for likes and stuff. This is very lame. But there, there's people, there's people watching and there's, there's like, pe- there are people interacting. I, yeah, okay. Maybe. I don't know. No, don't, don't say there's probably five people on their stream. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything, dude. I, I'm, I'm all for everyone, but I guess the point I'm trying to get is that like alpha land is like an interesting space because it was designed for people to come and film. And that is exactly what has happened. And true. now it's like, I think people that just want to work out are kind of like, I yeah, it, if you here. come in here and like want to just work out, it can be a little. Oh yeah, if you're like a professional 35 year old business guy that has a membership here to come work out, like you're you're not going to want to come work out here after the first time. You're gonna be like, that's not for me. L- let me ask you this: uh, Everyone out here is obviously trying to make it, and the yeah. and the, the the influx of people that are trying to be content creators and try to do exactly what like I did back in the day: film yourself in the gym, and thankfully they have a gym where they can go and not get kicked out, yeah. and you know. Be be shirtless and film content and do whatever you want, right? But sometimes when you have so much free reign, there's no structure to it at all, and it's just chaos out there. Um, but that's it's, it's mainly like the peak time, so I'm just kind of... Five o'clock, which yeah. I don't want to be a hypocrite here, okay. but we go at like normal times. Sometimes we work out at 1 p.m. on a Tuesday, mm-hmm. and it's still... And in my back of my head, I'm like, what, does anyone have a job? 
well. There's no way everyone works from home. And even if you do work from home, it's one o'clock. You're not off at one o'clock. It's always confusing me when there's, no, it's not one o'clock. Lunch break's like 11 or 12 at latest. That always blows my mind when we come work out at like 9.45 on a Wednesday and the gym's packed with like younger kids. And I'm like too old to be in school where they're like on summer break, but not old enough to be like rich as shit. I can't figure that one out. I don't know how there's thousands of people working out here at like 9.45 on a Tuesday. Like we're, it turns out that there's more people than just us that are successful, Joe. I guess. I don't know, man. But. Or they just don't have jobs. Listen, I'm all for people trying to make it on social media, right? Because yeah. I know the struggle. I know the journey. And there's well, different. you did it. Yeah. There's different, there's different like uh, benefits and cons to like trying to start now. Mm-hmm. Um, but with everyone, I think the dream of being a content creator, whether, whether you love it or hate it, Joe, uh, is a thing that is very desirable because of the freedom, maybe the popularity, the clout, free stuff, like all the benefits from it, right? Um, Not not getting into like the downsides and, you know, working for yourself and everything. But at what point do you think that people, like if you're trying to make it, what point do you stop trying to make it? You don't. Like, I don't think they do. Like, I'm not trying to like crush people's dreams, but like, do you, at a certain point, if, if it hasn't taken off, and you're not making money, but like, but look at, look at like a Mr. Beast. Mm-hmm. Most, the richest yeah. dude on YouTube, most successful. And he made you videos for years yeah. and had no growth at all. I don't all. think there's a time to stop. I think if it's your, uh, I think that look, the difference, if you're a professional and that's your side gig, I think you can do it as long as you want. And mm-hmm. someday if it pops off, it pops off. It's great. I think for the people that like moved here, to become fitness influencers that are like burning through their savings, you got to either do it pretty quick or decide to go a different route. Yeah, but how like we've met people that have moved to Houston just to go to Alpha Land because they want to be fitness YouTubers. And it's like after about a year, I'm, I'm after the first year, if you're just burning through your savings and you're not growing any kind of social media following, like it might be time to try something else. Yeah, but I think I think the uh, the possibility of yeah. You know, if I just make one more video and that's the that's the I guess that's the, the question I'm trying to get to is like when when do you when do you go for something and and yeah. decide to and I, I don't like to use the word give up I don't right? want to say ever I think they just keep going because YouTube is that one weird thing where like if you're really trying to make it in like a professional sense you either slowly grow up or not but like there's in YouTube you could post 500 videos and never get a view and one viral one jumps you to 50,000 subs and now you're on the front I mean it's it's hard to be like quit now because maybe a year from now that one video gets you your fucking your following yeah I, I don't think people should quit I think I, I, I guess for me it's like it's, it's interesting seeing, like you said, people like during the day and this is their full-time thing when maybe, you know, they're not making that much money as whereas I was like, I worked for, I worked yeah. for in the corporate world, did it on the side and only when it became financially s- stable did I, did I leave rather than kind of like going in with a hope and a dream and scraping by, I was like, nah, I'm going to keep doing my job. I don't think, I don't think there's a time to quit. I think there's a time to maybe realign your content if it's not working. Like I see all the time when we're working out, there's 15 dudes doing epic back day workout at alpha land. And I'm like that there's 8 million videos on YouTube already. I don't think that Bob in Stafford, Texas is going to invent some new revolutionary back workout. Like no one wants to watch that. I think after your 17th, like back day workout, that's not getting any traction. Maybe it's time to pivot. Maybe do something a little bit more specialized or move into a different field. I don't know. I think that's probably the bigger issue is like people aren't getting a following and they just keep doing the same things. And it's like, that doesn't work anymore on YouTube. I don't think that's the way to get big anymore is to just like, live stream your workout. I don't think it's going to work anymore. I mean, I see, I'd like to agree with you, but I have not changed my content at all and it's continued to go down and I complain about it. And then I refuse to change any of my content because I'm just so. like screaming at the clouds. What, what, what do you think the lifespan, like, let's say you do pop off. Like, what do you think a realistic lifespan on a content creator is? I'm going to say five years. You think like on a, on average people who like find success? Five. I'm going to say, I'm going to say hyper success, like five years, like even people like Casey Neistat, like very successful, like, or you Olson, like very, very successful, but eventually you do see it start slowing down. Even like Peter McKinnon nowadays, like he's posting a lot less and his views are not anywhere near where they were at, at its peak. I think you got like five years of like really, really, really good success. And then you either need to kind of change it up or kind of retire. I think that's, I think that's pretty much what I experienced. Five years. Yeah, I mean, I started 2013, and I'd say, yeah, yeah 28, I, I, 2019 was when I launched Sour Strips, and that was like the peak of my, I didn't know it at the time, but that was like the peak, and that was like six, you know, five, six years. I mean, so, maybe 10. 
like Casey's probably the first person that'll make it like he's still relevant. Like he posted the other day about the vision thing and that got like four, like he's still posting videos that are still trending and he's been doing that for fuck. I mean, he was like the first guy to really make vlogging like really, really famous. I, I think like I sometimes I get in my head of like, uh, you know how like, you've heard people say like, well, I'm, I'm not going to vlog when I'm like 40 or something. But then again, you look at yeah. Casey Neistat. He's 40, right? He's got to be in his 40s. At least, yeah. yeah. it's like you look at his older people who like, it, I don't think age is when you like have to stop. No, or, dude, I follow. There's a couple of tech reviewers that are like 60 that I still watch their videos. You watch 60 year old men on the internet? Yeah, sometimes. Mm. There's 60 year old men in my area that want to chat. <laughs> Click the ads. Now yeah, I got yeah. this, this damn spyware, dude. Um, you know, it's interesting, like w everyone wants like the success and then like, as you, as you continue to grow, you stay, kind of stop doing as much. I mean, look at like myself and Christian, we're not, we don't like do the same level of output as we yeah. once did because we kind of move on. I think to what's interesting to me is the, the people that have been able to take YouTube and turn it into a like multi-million dollar corporation in the YouTube space. So like mostly in the tech space, like Linus Tech Tips. They own like 17 different channels. They're all successful or MKHD or whatever. He has four different channels and like they have a full production team. They have set studios all like Mr. Beast, same way. It's like people have taken the YouTube platform and turned it into like almost a, almost like a TV network, like almost like Fox or ABC or whatever. Like MKHD has a whole network of people working together now. And it's like, that's wild. Like you built a multi-million dollar company inside of YouTube. I think the dream is just people. What's your thoughts on like, people thinking the dream is working for yourself. Cause obviously we do love it. Wouldn't go back I to like, even, I mean, what most of what I do is freelance contract. I don't work for myself. I get yelled at all the time by people. Like I technically work for myself on some projects, but I'm still trying to get a product done. I mean, even you sour strips, you work for yourself, but if you miss the fucking big shipment to H E B, they're still chewing your ass out. Like you always work for somebody. Yeah. Like you still have responsibilities to meet and someone's going to be pissed off of you if you don't do what you're supposed to do. Hmm. Why, why, why do you think the dream is like to like fully d d work for yourself? I guess, I guess it's the freedom. I think it's a clout. I think most people just want to say they work for themselves. I don't think they care. Like I don't, I, I have friends that make four or $500,000 a year working at like Amazon, like AWS and stuff. They don't care. No, none of them are like, Oh, I, I wish I worked for myself for a hundred grand. Like they're making so much money. They don't care. I, 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 I hate the stigma. I don't know if it's stigma or right, right, right word, but I, I hate the like connotation around that. Like it's like, you have to escape working for the man. Like you can't work for someone else. I don't really think there's anything. And I'm people are going to say just because I, you know, have employees. Like I think there's nothing wrong with working for you. But like at a certain point, like if you keep working for yourself, you're going to need people to work for you. And are, like, do you think the people that say like financial freedom, work for yourself, don't go to the corporate grind, like they have no employees, they have no one helping them. But like, well, well, eventually well, they will need it, and then yeah. that's when it kind of. They're like, no, no, no you should work back. for yourself, but like, but not the people that work for me. Yeah, they can like, work for me. Yeah, yeah, like they're they're fine working for me. Yeah, I don't think everyone's supposed to work for themselves. The same way, I don't think everyone's supposed to lead. I don't think if, if tomorrow a zombie apocalypse fucking breaks out, I don't think everyone needs to be the leader of their group. Like, obviously, it won't work. There's usually going to be one person that we are all like, okay, this person. I mean, even in the U.S., we have a president, we have governors. It, it always stems up. Like, I don't think every single person is meant to be a leader and run their own company and do everything by themselves. Do you think it takes a certain mindset to do that? You don't think everyone can be an entrepreneur? I don't think, as this sounds shitty, I don't think everyone is meant to be the queen bee. I think there's worker bees and it's how society works. Mm. I think some of it's luck, some of it's just shitty, like bad timing. I mean, there's a lot of factors that work into that, but I don't think everyone is meant to be their own boss. I mean, fuck, definitely not. What are we gonna do when there's 8 million sour strips company? Like you, yeah. you can't be so many, you know, like it, it doesn't really work. But I will say I have friends. I think it depends on how much freedom you have your job, how into your job you are, and how much money you make. So I have friends that, like I said, are making 400000 with AWS. None of them have ever said, like, oh, man, I really hate working for the man. They're fine. They're happy as can be. But if you're working on the assembly line at Amazon, you're probably like, fuck this. This really sucks. Like, you know, I think it depends where you're at. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think the problem with, like, the future of our society, though, is you look at people on the Internet making stupid money, and they, they, they think that is normal. Like they think that making hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars from selling a course, starting an OF, yeah. like working for yourself, like something. Or they did it, why can't I? Exactly, yeah. so they think that like working for someone else is like beneath them, which is like the problem. Then no one wants to work because everyone's like, no, I'm gonna try to work for myself. And then well, no one wants to social do Social media, as we all know now, like social media is such a 
fake thing in the first place. Like you don't see even the people that are working for themselves. Like you don't see all the days that they're fucking down and pissed off and everything's not going right. Like you, even you, I know there's days where you're really fucking pissed off about something and then you pick up the camera and Hey guys, what's going on? You know, there's, yeah. you, you miss that side of it. And social media is so good at making everything look perfect all the time. Everyone, and then people see that and they're like, I'm having a bad day. Max never has a bad day. Why don't I want to do what he does? Everyone wants all of this success, but they don't realize like, especially like the, I think they see it. the bigger and bigger you grow, the more headaches and annoying shit yeah. you deal with that. Like you don't see because you don't, yeah. unless you tell everyone all of the problems that, you know, like there's a lot of shit that going on in the background right now that I like legally cannot talk about that I'm dealing with. I don't want to smash my head against the wall that I'm like, I never would deal with this. If I just <laughs> yeah. worked for someone else, I would have to deal with all this shit. Yeah. But the upsides are obviously there. And, but like you see that you see the stress. I mean, look at, you know, Christian or the, well, the lack thereof when we look at Christian, cause we, you know, don't see him as much. And that's my basketball four days ago. He started typing. That was it. The bubbles popped up. They went away. I never got a response. I'm still waiting, dude. What's your thoughts on a big question I always get is like, how come we don't ever like see, hang out with all of the people that like, if you go back five years on our videos and see all the, the we'll call it the squad success, infrastructure, company size. I think a lot of our friends are now getting so busy with shit that like they just don't, I don't think they have time to be friends. It sounds shitty, but I get it. I mean, if I was running a half billion dollar company, I probably wouldn't have a lot of time either. So the fact that you and I hang out all the time, does that mean we're, we're not? Poor. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's a different, I don't know. I, it's a different place. I think also maybe we value it a little bit more. I think it, it also, I guess how you look at it. I look at like what I do for a living and I'm like, oh, it's, it's cool, but I still value everything else. But if I really want to take that to the next level, I know how much time and money I have to put into it. I don't have time for everything else. I think someone like Christian has looked at Alphalete as like, that's his baby. He's going to get this thing to a billion dollar company. So now he is willing to just put everything into it. Yeah. Or like, I, I haven't decided that about software company. I'm not like, I'm to the point where I'm just going to only do this and not talk to anybody else. And only, like, I'm not there. I've kind of accepted, honestly, like how busy everyone is. And then like, I... I kind of like understand my relationship with people and how I can interact with them now. Example is like Christian. It's like, I don't, I don't hit him up to go to sushi tonight or like be like, Hey dude, let's go get a margarita and some fajitas because I know he's going to say no. Yeah. So it's almost like I've stopped even trying. Yeah. I've, I've, I just, I'm like, Hey, I know he likes basketball. So I'm like, yeah, unless I break into Christian's office. I'm pretty aware that like, unless we bump into each other, I ain't saying I'm not, I'm not talking to Christian at this point. Yeah. I guess it's just di different like mindsets. Cause like in, in my head, I'm like, what's the point of like, and I, I'm not trying to like just talk, just talk about Christian, but like, I, I guess I'm someone that like, no matter how successful I get, I want to make sure that I do all these other things. Whereas mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, Hey, my enjoyment doesn't come from going to get Mexican with, you know, I, my enjoyment is, you know, building these companies and the bigger you grow, the more headaches and stress that you're dealing with that. Yeah. It's like, I literally don't have time to go do, you know, do this thing with you because I have, you know, my company's significantly larger. So it's kind of like, sometimes I, I don't want my companies to get so big because I, I, I look at a lot of individuals around me who are doing really big things and I admire them, but I'm almost like, is that, is that what it's going to look like if, when I get there? And I don't know. If I think, I, I don't I know think if there's I also that. the matter of like finding the right team. Yeah. Cause if you had the right people and I think that's something that Christian's had a hard time doing, like we've, there's been people come and go, like he has a hard time finding the right people for Alpha Elite to really help him. You don't know why it's because everyone wants to work for themselves, dude. <laughs> that too. Where like, I look at my, my dad, so my dad owns a cabinet shop. He has 350, 400 employees. Then he's still able to like, Hey, let's go to dinner tomorrow or whatever. You know, like he's, he's able, like he has a lot more probably overhead and stress than someone like Christian does, yeah. but he's still able to have that, but he has, you know, for the last 20 years been grooming the right people to put in the right spot. So he can step out for a little bit and come back. Can't say grooming dude. Can't no, not grooming. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Okay. I just, I just, I just want to say that I do, I do wish things were different in our, I, that when I go back and look at like four or five years ago and I see our entire squad, you know, Christian Shawley, Daniel Dare. I mean, everyone, like the yeah. whole squad. And like, it's almost like I want to relive that. Yeah, I, dude, I didn't, you know, whatever. Like I, I miss everyone. That's like what I, I was saying. Do you miss going out? Because I can genuinely say I have no desire now. Like on a Saturday night at like midnight when I'm like in my bed watching a movie, I'm never like, fuck, I really wish we were at Clay right now, like partying it up. Like I think we did that every weekend for a very long time. And now I have no desire to do that. What anymore. Joe meant to say is when he's like on Saturday night, when he's like, 
crying, masturbating. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, I'm, I, I don't know what happened. I'm like, I'm turning 29 next week. Maybe that's it. But like, I have no desire. Like when I see the younger guys, we know like Marco and those guys like post at the club. I'm like, I have no, none of me is like, fuck, I really wish I was at the club right now. Like I'm, I'm good. I did it. I've been there. It's fine. Well, after the hundredth time, I think it's, it's just the same thing. I never got the whole club thing. Like, oh, let's go sit in a booth where we can't hear each other, but we're going to talk to each other, but we have no clue what each other is saying. And occasionally someone's going to give us a shot. You know, to be honest, the actual whole concept of going to a, a club or bar yeah. is actually pretty crazy when you analyze it um, from a, from an outside, because it's like, if you, us and five people want to want to be like, dude, we let's, let's drink alcohol tonight. And we're yeah. like, okay, cool. We all want to drink alcohol. We all want to get even drunk, listen to music, whatever. Like we could do that at our house, yeah. but you're like, no, no, no. We want to go to the club, right? Yeah. Okay. So you, you got to so be seen at the club though. Yeah. yeah. So you go to the club yeah. or the bar, whatever. And then you're buying the same stuff you could literally buy yeah. for half the price of your house. And unless you're a whole group full of single people, right? You're only talking to the same people. Yeah. yeah. No one's you, picking up people at the club. Very rarely does someone leave the club with someone that didn't come with us. Yeah, but the crazy, you know, what's even crazier is like you go to these places and you want to go to a bar. Oh, I'm excuse bars. You want to go to a bar that has some people, but not too many people, even though you're not going to talk to any of them. Yeah. And you don't want, but you don't want it to be too packed, but it can't be too dead or else you're like, whoa, this place is dead. Even though you're only going to talk to the same people that you went with. I mean, even crazier than that, we're going to buy six drinks at the bar for hundred bucks or... We're gonna do that in the form of a bottle in a booth, three, four thousand dollars. I will say though, but now we get to sit at the booth with our feet on the thing. We sit on the sides and we can take pictures and like. The yeah, club but, is a wild concept. Yeah, but there's something about like being there. Like w w when when the drinks start kicking in, I'm having a great time. There's there's a there's a ten minute period when I'm at the club and I'm like, fuck yeah, this is sick, but it fades real quick. Then you got, especially for us, we got that hour long Uber ride where you can't hear anything. Everything's ringing a little bit. You're usually passed out at this point. So yes. you, don't, you don't have to deal with this, but I usually have to sit there and just, I like, can't hear Uber drivers trying to talk to me. I have no clue what the fuck's going on. It's, it's, it's interesting how like the older you get, I mean, like you, 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 you hear it from older people, right? That you're like, oh, like you're going to, your mindset's going to change on this yeah. or the, you're going to stop liking this and you're like, yeah, fuck off, dude. But it, it's, it just happens. Like I, I definitely, I trust me. I love getting, you a, got blackout drunk every weekend. I know. And then you'd be up at 7am on the treadmill. Yeah. Like pretty clockwork actually. No hangover 7am. Like nothing ever happened. No, I'd have a hangover dude. Sometimes, but sometimes no. Sometimes you're like, Hey, let's go to the gym at nine o'clock the morning after you literally blacked out. I, de I definitely don't. I haven't really been like drunk drunk since that time when I threw up a bunch of blood for Taylor's birthday. Remember, so like almost remember a year 11? Ago. Yeah. You got I, us kicked out. Yeah. I never got my hat. Yeah, I puked inside Club 11 in On Miami. a stripper. What? On a woman of working woman. She, I mean, she was like our hostess or whatever. Probably on I don't know. All I know is I convinced one of the girls to go get me a hat. Waiting for the hat, I hear a bunch of commotion. I see a big bouncer grab someone. Next thing I know, it's Max. And I'm like, hey, can I get that hat? And they're like, y'all need to fucking leave. And we're just like, okay. Uh, that's be, be, I never because, got my 11 hat. because I threw up. Yeah. I think as you get older, yeah, you, you stop really caring to go to the club. I mean, I'm probably going to go to some clubs. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I'll, especially if I'm out, like if you're like, Hey, let's go to Miami. Like I'll go to a club in Miami or whatever. But like the whole Houston every weekend, we're going to meet our friends. Like I'm good. I'll go to a bar. I'm cool going to a bar where we can like converse, but the whole, like, let's go with super loud music where we have no clue what each other is saying. Like for what? Yeah. What's, what's the point, dude? What else is going to change when you get older? I don't know. Interests. You're gonna say insurance. It's like that's I mean, definitely has. AARP, dude. Yeah, like at what point do you start bird watching? My, my mom, my mom has an entire book and a pair of binoculars. She has a whole book of like Virginia birds and just like so when a bird pops up on her porch, she like looks at them and analyzes it. So I, I love my mom because she's gonna watch this. But my mom retired recently. Mm -hmm. Within like six months of her retiring, I've just got like the weirdest. She's making her own bread. She's making ice cream now. I got a text about some caterpillars she found in her backyard. Then she's telling me what kind of caterpillars are. Then it, they're going to hatch next week. I'm like, what? this is what retiring looks like? Like you're documenting the caterpillars in our backyard, which is cool. I'm all for it. But I'm like, at what point are you like, all right, I'm going to start watching birds. I'm really going to buy some binoculars. You know, the same way you analyze that, it, it's like if you went into a coffee shop or yeah. whatever, and you you look across and imagine if there was someone there, not on their phone, not reading anything, just like, 
just like sipping coffee and just like staring around. You kind of be like, what the fuck is wrong with this person, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you, you, you find it strange that when people are doing, like not doing certain things because you think you like have to, right? And it's like, even when people retire, they're like, oh, I, I always have to be like working on a project. And it's weird to be like, what if you just chilled and made bread yeah. and stuff? Cause like, is life the purpose of work? And it's like, if you, know. if you already find financial success, you've already built a legacy, you've already made an impact, you've helped change the world. Imagine you've done all that. No. Yeah. Can't you just make bread? Watch some birds. I'm what? saying right now on the record, I have no desire to watch birds, but 65 year old Joe might love bird watching. Let me ask you this. 65 year old Joe. Yeah. I'm assuming most people, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say this, but a lot of people want to have financial success. We'll yes. say substantial if possible, right? Yeah. If you were most like, people want to retire. Yeah, and, and and have but not have money as a a worry. Yeah, right? yeah, like retire and just live life. There's this guy that I uh I recently found. His name is Ramit, and he is like a I don't want to call him like a money therapist, but he's like a money okay. he's like a money guy, but he talks about kind of like just a different perspective on money, not in like a guru type of way. I mean, yeah. I'm sure he's making money from doing stuff. I've I've DM'd him a whole bunch of times. Has not responded to me. I want to go on the podcast. Yeah, no. Ramit, yes. Damn, dude. Anyway, big question he always asks is, what does your rich life look like? So you're trying to acquire wealth, whatever, yeah. so that you can have it. What does your rich life look like to you? Right now? Yeah, like in, in, a, in a perfect world, later in your life, you have all the money that you desire. Okay. What, like, what are the things think, you will start doing think, because, you, well, because no, you have the money? I think it's material things for me. I don't think I'd do anything differently. I really don't. I mean, maybe it'll change later, but like, I'm not the guy that like, I have to go see the world and travel everywhere. Like I'm, I'm good. I think I would like a, a house on some land. I would like to have some land. I would definitely want probably 10 cars, give or what? take. Yeah. Why? I would like want- to have my own little workshop, like a little, like a house with like a detached garage with a workshop in it and stuff. That's, that's my, you know, I want a couple kids. Where are you going to put my, 10 cars? And like a barn. I want like a, like a side barn to the house. Mm. Like right now, if you give me a hundred million dollars and we're like, go, like I'd probably spend 20 of it on the house and cars and shit. And then the rest is just going to sit. Like, I'm good. I have noticed. I don't think I want a yacht. I don't want a plane. I'm good. Yeah. I think people don't need as much money as they think they do. Unless you want to live that like yacht life. Yeah. I want a new Rolex every week. Yeah, like, I don't think I'll ever be that kind of guy. I don't think no matter how much money I make, I don't think I'm ever just like new watch every week. New, I'm already new cars a lot, but I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. How much money do you think you need for you to be like, I have like, like take out the, like, I want to keep working to like grind, whatever. What is the dollar amount that you think you need in your bank account collectively to be like, to be like, I have enough money. Honestly, 10, $10 million. Yeah. Cause I mean, 10 million liquid your money. I mean, if you can make 4% return, that's 400 grand a year. And I think 4% is like pretty doable in the market. I mean, 4% you could probably safely get, let's call it 2%. That's $200,000 a year in income. If you already bought your house and everything, I mean, $200,000 a year should be enough to. You're like, I don't know if I can live off this $200,000. That's what I'm I mean, technically I feel like 10 liquid, you're, you're set. Like you're not going to go buy yachts and shit, but like you can live a very good life for the rest of your life. Well, I guess just off the so, so that's what this guy, Ramit, I think I'm saying Ramit is, is like his, the point he's trying to get is like, your life is like this, like you, you have like goals of what you want to do and you're like, okay, this $10 million, you're like, do you need $10 million to do what you think is your rich life? And most of the time it's like, oh no, I don't need that much money. It's like, See, well, the problem I have is like my dream garage, which I've done this a couple of times. My dream garage is like 6.5. What? Yeah. Like if I could buy any car I wanted for a 10 car garage, I'm probably about $6 million in cars. So that's the bigger issue is like six of my tens going into cars. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. I know. There's just some cars I want. Like, well, for example, like I want like a Pagani wire a PC Roadster. You want it's a like Bukaki? No. Pagani. Pagani. One of the last like Italian, truly Italian built cars. Is Epic it, cars. But you're looking, I think, for a Roadster or BC Roadster, you're probably 3 million, 3.2 for that one car. It, it, is, is the Pagani, am I saying that right? Pagani. Pagani. P-A-G-A-N-I. Not Punani. No, not Punani. Okay, uh, is, are those cars like, now, w- wait till I finish. Yeah. Are those like the McLarens where they're like really re- really fast, really fancy, but you, as you've said, yeah. pieces of shit and break down all the time? Uh, I don't think enough people own them to really make a, a consensus on that. <laughs> There's not a lot of them. Like there, there may be 
50 in the US right now, like maybe. I don't I don't think anyone's like come forward like, oh, they're pieces of shit, they break down because like no one has them. From the people that I do know that have them, there's actually a couple here in Houston. I haven't heard of anyone having issues or anything, but I also don't think anyone's daily driving one of these things. Like, Couldn't they just make them a little bit cheaper and then they would sell more of them? I don't think he wants to. These things are like hand built. They're like pieces of art. You should put one on the, they're, they're dope. They're, they're wild. It's like this little old Italian man that I think he used to work for Ferrari or Lamborghini or something. He decided to make his own car. Do you think when people are like- it's Mercedes engines, so. You said made by hand. Yeah. Do you think the quality is better because it's made by hand or couldn't you just get robots that would do the same thing? Debatable. I think it's nicer made by hand, but for some things, some things, no. If you said like, oh, I'm going to build you a TV by hand, like, no, nah, I want the robot built TV. Dude, the whole built by hand thing, because this is where like, I mean, we had a big conversation about the AI yeah. and taking over jobs, which I made a YouTube video about and the comments were pretty, pretty crazy. Um, and people had some... I didn't see that. Yeah, I, that was a very hot take on my part because I, I didn't mean it in a bad way. I was like, they don't have any other skill. I wasn't like, oh, they can't do anything else. I was more just saying that like, not everyone in the world is going to lose their jobs to AI and go get another job. Yeah. Like if I take away all middle-class jobs, they can't all turn into surgeons. Like they got to go somewhere. The clip you made it, you made it sound like I was just like, they can't do anything but work in a warehouse. Like they can do other stuff. Well, no. I, all I, that stuff's taken out. I think like, people need to understand. It, 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 it's like... It, it's like if people carried everything around all the time and then they invented cars to help you carry shit. You can't be like, oh God, these cars just like took away the jobs from people who had to carry stuff. It's like, like you can't just get mad that the world is evolving. No, but I don't want to go into that conversation again, but we weren't, I, I think more so what we're worried about is that it's not about getting mad. It's about there not being another job for you. It's about eliminating three quarters of the workforce with AI and not creating new jobs for that three quarters. Like they, what do they do? Yeah, but do you think that you, it's, it's either is it like it's all okay or none of it's okay? Because, for example, if it's convenient for you, for the same people, like the people who get really angry about like AI or whatever, taking their jobs, yeah. I'd ask you be like, hey, when you have like three things at a grocery store, okay, mm -hmm. um, and there's a whole bunch of people like uh, checkout clerks, right? And you have to wait in line, but you're like, oh, God, I just have three, three, three things. But now there's like the bullpen where you can just go and, and yeah. do it really fast. Those people are like, oh, yeah, I love that. Like, yeah, no, I, they're like, yeah. They're, that's fine. The convenience no, no. is great. I think the, the bigger issue is if, if all fast food workers are eliminated at the same time, mm -hmm. I don't know what that number is, but let's say it's a, oh, million, like a million, million people. Yeah, McDonald's is doing let's that, say right? all of them, million people, no work. Does McDonald's keep those people, like, do they pay them like a welfare check? Like, does McDonald's give them a little bit of money every month to make up for the fact they fired them? Like, who's paying these people if that job goes away? Do you think this is actually a pretty crazy way to think yeah. about it? Uh, are you are you someone who believes in like evolution? Yeah, or like the yeah. sh the strongest survive? Yeah, yeah. You know, Monkey, like fish frog. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the Darwinism. I think that's it's kind of like you know, like the strongest versions of animals are going to keep yeah. becoming the strongest versions yeah, because but we're, we're humans. We don't let other humans just die. Or no, no, I know we're yeah. not saying we die. Yeah, but don't you think that it that it, if it puts the lower level jobs out of jobs? Yeah. Do you think in the long term, and th I'm, this is like just a thought, do you think in the long term it's actually going to benefit the long term society because it's going to force people to become like no. superior humans? No, because there can't be that many superior humans. We can't all be superior humans. So here's here's what more hold than on, likely hold on, happens. Hold on, hold on. Do, do, maybe maybe in a hundred years from now. Yeah. I'm, I don't want, I don't want to say like what a low level job, because it's like, if you, if you got a job that that's great, but like yeah. whatever a low level job is in a hundred years, maybe a low level job is five ranks up from that in the future. And it's like, what though? I don't know. So here's, here's more than likely what happens, right? All fast food workers get fired at the same time. They all go automated. Realistically speaking, the governments, not just the U S all around the world are going to have to tax the corporations more money. Like an, it'll probably be an automation tax. Something like the more automated labor you have, the more you have to pay in taxes. And then that tax will pay all these people that are now on welfare. That's more than likely what happens is we eliminate a lot of these jobs and then the US, the governments will come in and tax these companies that want to go automated. And it'll still be cheaper than paying the people, but it'll still cost them something and that's how they're going to pay these people. But then you have to start wondering, it's like, okay, if I pay a million people to stay at home and give them welfare checks, now like, what are they doing? You have to assume they're dumbing down. Like you have to assume that million people are just See, not I, really contributing to society. Not because they don't want to, they can't anymore. It's a terror. That's what me and David were saying. Like it's a, literally like a utopian thing. Cause like you're going to end up with, if I'm forcing you to get a government check, cause I took away your job, you have nothing else to let's do. Let's say you work at a fast food place and yeah. now a robot has taken your job. 
Yeah. What if I go, hey, you can either not have a job because this robot took it, or now you can learn how to work on those machines and you can have the job of that. And if, what if you're just like, I don't want to do that. Less. Well, I mean, you have to take that opportunity, <laughs> but not everyone at the McDonald's, they don't need 25 robot mechanics at the McDonald's. So like someone's not going to get a job. Wild concept, but it, we're going to find out because I don't think it's slowing down. Well, that's like the, this I, is in our lifetimes. We will see this. Well, un, people, unfold. people get so opinionated, but it's like almost like similar to my opinion with politics. I'm like, what am I going to do about it? Like, that's when you have to figure out. Like, you can't just say, what am I going to do? Because like, like you, you can. You're just yelling at the clouds. You can. But if you replace your people at the fucking Sourcers warehouse with with robots, they can't just say, what am I going to do about it? Like, they have to do something about it. I'm going to go find another job real quick. I had people in the comments that were saying like, if AI keeps going and people don't have jobs, then people aren't going to have the money to go into the store to buy sour strips. So I should be terrified. It all has I'm to like, be subsidized. Yeah, I'm like, they guys, will have money. Guys, guys that's a really, that's a really specific thing you're stressed about. Like, I can almost guarantee you, we will start seeing a new tax. There will be a automation tax on sour strips. So you can hire robots. You can buy robots, but you're going to have to pay X amount per robot per percentage of sales to help pay all the people that you're putting out of work. Robot they tax? They have to. They, There's the only way they can make enough tax money to pay all the people that are going to have to go on welfare. Well, dude, um, yeah. I assume. I'm making bold assumptions here, but that would be my... Well, I'll tell you, by the time we get old, by the time we have a rich life, by the time yeah. you have your $15 million in cars, we're awesome. going to see how technology is. But as we get hover older... Hover cars, dude. I don't want a hover car. Mm, I feel, yeah, I don't know how sp flying cars will work because like, you know it's always wild when you see like the Jetsons and stuff where it's like year 2020 and it's like all flying cars and like bubbles and stuff. It's like, y'all, y'all really missed the mark on that one. Like we didn't, we didn't quite get that far ahead. Well, they didn't know. I know. It's just crazy to think in the, like the, the, as quick as technology was moving in like the seventies and eighties in those movies, they assumed by 2020, we would be so much further than we are. I mean, like we have some of it, but like in the '60s, they assumed in 2020 we'd be like living on Mars with bubbles and stuff. All we have Obviously, is hologram Tupac. Yeah, we came up with OnlyFans and VR. Like we, <laughs> we didn't really get as far as y'all thought. But at the time, <laughs> technology is moving so fast. That, like I don't blame them for thinking it was going to go that far. But like we definitely are slowing down a little bit. Well, it's interesting to see how far it goes as we get older. And jo Joe, we mentioned how you know. Hold up, one more quick thing. Okay, you go to Chick Fil A. It's all automated. It fucks up your order. Who do you, do you yell at the robot? Like who, how do you fix the issue? If there's not a single human working at McDonald's and they fuck up your order, like what, how do you, how do you fix this? Same way that I feel like it has to be like one human. Same way that when I go to the vending machine and it doesn't give me my snack. Start smacking it. I just beat the shit <laughs> yeah, out of okay. that robot, dude. Like local YouTuber fights automated machine. <laughs> um, okay, Joe, as, as we get older and all this, all this stuff happens, we talked about how we, we changed the things we would like to do. Okay. Um, you mentioned the other the other day we were talking about you know, obviously this whole submarine thing that ha is pretty crazy. Um, we we kind of talked about things we would do, things we wouldn't do, and, yeah. and Joe mentioned he's like, I would never go in a submarine, or I would never go in a spaceship. Yeah, I would okay. never go into a vacuum in a tin can. Do you think the older you get, the the more you weigh the risk to reward? No. What? With other things, maybe. But at no point in my life will I get in a fucking tin can and go to see the Titanic. It ain't happening. No, okay. Yeah, but I'm talking, like, as you get older, do you do things that are less... Why is my phone fucking blowing up, dude? What is happening? I don't know. Um, do, like, do you think the older you get, the less uh, extreme things you'll do? Example. I don't think so, because I think, like, liability for kids and stuff. Like, if I'm gonna do... If I'm gonna die in some stupid fucking submarine accident right now... At least it's not that bad. I don't have kids. Once I have kids, I think now I'm even more cautious to like off myself in a stupid way. If anything, I feel like right now I should be the most reckless I could be because I don't have anyone really depending on me. Like yeah. Once I have kids and grandkids and all that, like I don't think I should just be like randomly going to Mount Everest. Like doesn't seem like a good idea. Do you like, would you go skydiving? Yeah. Yeah. I do want to go skydiving. I would. So two things I would love to do skydiving shark cage. Like I would love to go see a great white, like face to face. Never in a million years would you get me in a cage. Really? Why would you do that? I just, I don't, it'd be a cool thing to see face to face because you can't see that in a zoo. Like you, you can't get face to face with a great white anywhere besides in a cage. That would just be a cool, I mean, just to see that animal up close would be wild. And I have a huge fear of sharks. And I feel like that would help me get over it. It's just like get in the water with one. That's so why we were in the Caymans. I was like stoked. Like we went to do a little the snorkeling thing and the guy was like, oh, there's like a black tip reef shark. And I wasn't, I was like, this is awesome. Like this is a cool experience. 
but I'm terrified of sharks. The shark haven't, I mean, has there, has, has there been instances where the shark has gotten through the cage? Like very rarely, but yes. Yeah. No one's, I don't think anyone's died in a shark cage. I don't think there's been a case where the shark went into the shark cage and killed somebody. Like, I think there's been cases where a shark got into the cage and people were like frantically trying to get out, but I don't think there's ever been like a fatality from a shark cage. I think I might be wrong. I think I'm done doing shit that I could, I could potentially have a bad outcome for. I've gone skydiving, but now I think I'd probably still end up going, but I'm just like, have you been? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I went with my brother. Oh, I want, I would go once. I feel like it'd be cool to do one time. It is really cool. You it, j- just like most of our sex lives, it's about ten seconds and then it's over. Like ten seconds of free fall, okay, and yeah, then yeah. You, and then like you, you jump out of the plane, and like yeah, yeah. ten seconds later, they pull the parachute. I got you. But it feels like a long time. Like ten seconds of fun, and then like a forty-five minute reset to get back up. Yes. Yeah. Sounds about right. Similar. Yeah. I think. But but now I'm just like, why would I jump out of a plane that I could potentially have a catastrophic event of and lose everything? I mean, why would you? Ride a plane in the first place then. Yeah. That is one thing I will say about like, as much as I think it was stupid for the whole submarine thing, and now we just heard the outcome today, mm-hmm. like we just found out the outcome. I'm also at some point, I kind of agree with the CEO. As much corners as we're cutting, it seems like the guy's kind of maybe playing with the line a little bit too close here. But his whole point of like, oh, if you want no risk, like just don't get out of bed. I think there are some things like skydiving to me statistically, I'm going to be okay. I feel like it's worth It's like it. driving a car. It's like you... That's could. what I'm saying. There's probably a better chance of me getting in an accident on the way to skydiving than me actually dying in a skydiving accident. Yeah, but I, th- I think if you can eliminate situations that could have worse yeah. outcomes yeah. than the average, it's like, I think when I watch those videos of people with the flying suits and they oh, jump wild. off and yeah. they do that, and I'm like, that looks like a lot of fun, but I don't think I'm going to do I it. I bet even those guys wouldn't get in a fucking tin can and go see the Titanic. Like, it takes a special person to get in a submarine and go down to the Titanic. On the topic of the uh, the, the the submarine, mm-hmm. uh, whenever something kind of like, I, I, I guess I, I would say whenever something happens that maybe is out of the norm in the yeah. world, right? Um, obviously, the whole internet is talking about it because of everyone this this the uniqueness, Inter- the the terrifyingness, yeah. of, like everything about it, the the bad. But a lot of it you'll see is like memes and like people making fun of this it. This one, this one picked up fast. I yeah. will say this one, like two days in, we still didn't know, like they could be alive. And I was already seeing people making fun of this one. And I'm like, this is a little out of bad taste. Like, yeah, they're well, potentially it, down there dying. And you're like joking about it on. I, 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 I just can't wrap my head around, especially people like, I mean, I think it's just wrong to joke about literally if people are dying. Yeah. But like, how can people make memes? Like what type of people are these? I mean, so comedy is tragedy plus time, right? I think that's the the formula there, but like there was no time on this one. I mean, they were literally still possibly alive in there. I was seeing like people joking about it and like the, the billionaire hate the amount of people that were like serves him fucking right. Like he's a disgusting billionaire that probably hurt. Oh yeah. People are like anyone that's anti-rich people is very against this whole thing. What are they saying? Like good, not good, but like, why would we spend money to, to go find Cause I mean, all right, this is maybe on bad taste, but I will say this is going to cause a lot of regulation in that field because it happened in the middle of the fucking ocean. There's not a whole lot of regulation they can even put out there. I see where you're going with this. But because of the fact that that submarine was put together badly and it wasn't up to standards, it didn't have the right safety equipment. If we would have found out Sunday when it went missing that it imploded an hour 45 in, it's terrible. We got to decide, do we want to go get it off the bottom of the seafloor? Right. But that would have been the end of it. But because we had no idea... I would, I mean, I don't know the actual figure, but I would say we've probably spent $200 million easily trying to find the submarine for the last five days. I think a lot of people that are upset about it are like, why did we spend 200 million searching for five people? That's probably the biggest thing they're going to say is like, we had AC 130s in the air. We flew out these ships. We had carriers. We had such a huge thing. And I, I was talking to Mona about it earlier where I'm like, it is a wild concept that we like, we really pick things to, to care about because I saw also, which you probably, I guess most people during the Juneteenth, weekend, holiday weekend or whatever in Chicago, there were 75 shootings and 19 fatalities. I didn't even hear about it. It wasn't even on my radar. I had no clue what happened, but five dudes stuck in a submarine, global news. Everyone in the world knows about it. We're worried about it. We're sitting here waiting for it. I, it's a spectacle. It's something that you're just so out of like, it's such a, it's such a, I want to say a great story, but it's such a great like well, I story. Think, I mean, and, and I think there's no, I think there's no easy way to say this and it's probably going to come off strange, but like 
it's something that people have never seen before. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, so, it, but it doesn't, such a polarizing it doesn't make it yourself in that situation. Yeah. It doesn't it's make like, it that like the, what's happening to these five individuals makes it any less or greater than everything else that's happening in the I world. That's the biggest thing I've seen is like, why are we spending hundreds of millions of dollars searching for five people instead you, of sin, spending that money on like, there's hundreds of missing kids yeah. in Mexico right now and shit. Like, I, I guess I kind of see the argument there, but also I'm like, you it's in our nature. We're, we're going to go help. Like it's, I think governments are gonna, no one's just gonna be like, no, we don't care. Yeah. But do you think, do you think people that ha, that it, it's, it's really interesting how people get, obviously people are going to be very opinionated mm -hmm. and have like very hard takes on it. Um, do you, do you think those same people yeah. that, that are saying, why would we spend all this money on these, these five yeah, people yeah. and these billionaires, whatever, if one of their family members oh, were they, in there, yeah. unless it's the dude's son. You just go to Blink-182, but yeah, I mean, it's like, it would go both ways. I, I know for a fact though, that will be the, what comes out of this. Cause it, it's all going to be about regulation. Cause the issue wasn't that they did this. The issue was that it imploded day one and no one knew that until six days later after we already spent, I, I, again, I don't know what it costs, but I'm sure it's, how did they know that it imploded? They day found, one? they found the, uh, because they had sonar buoys, but basically the entire time that it went missing after that, they've had sonar buoys. They said they would have, they would have heard it implode. Plus the amount of pressure down there, like a little incident would have happened immediately. It wouldn't have been like over a couple of days it kept crushing. Like it would have been, I mean, there's so much pressure. So their argument right now is that we've been monitoring the entire area as of that Sunday night and we haven't heard anything. So they're thinking it, it imploded right when they lost con communication. So I guess now the argument's going to be like, because we didn't know that, we spent way more money, time and resources than we should have. So anyone that's going to do this in the future, it's going to be a shitload of regulations on it and stuff. Because now the government's going to say, like, we can't every time someone decides to go to the fucking Titanic, spend a quarter billion dollars trying to find you if it goes wrong. So they're going to lock this down. Like, if anything, this whole thing is going to put an end to the whole, like, private deep sea exploration side of it. I, I, think, the, I think the argument of, like, why are they spending so much money on this? It, it, that's such a complex oh, yeah. topic yeah, yeah. of, like... But like, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't come up if they found it intact... I don't think anyone have an issue with it. I think the issue is it imploded day one, but we didn't know that because a lot of red tape was cut on this whole thing. So we'll see. I think when things like this happen, like now it's going to become like a government red tape. Like no one else is going to see the Titanic as a tourist. And if they are, it's going to be, and maybe that's a good thing. I mean, you saw the videos of the sub, like it, it was not, Yeah. it doesn't look good now when there's like quotes of the CEO where he's like, ah, oh, safety's relative. Like, you know, who, who cares? It's like, nah, maybe you should have. On the top, let's let's switch topics of 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 island. I'm going on vacation uh, very very soon. Yes, uh, tomorrow. Well, Saturday. I'm, I'm going to Spain for uh, a little a little bit of work, a little bit of pleasure, and then when I come back, I'm here for a short period of time. And Taylor and I are going to Cancun, Mexico. Yes, I, I was wanna, supposed to go. You can still go. I might be going. You're not going to go. I might go. We, we guys, we see how the move goes. So. We pushed, we 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 pushed our vacation back because we asked like five groups of people to go, and everyone had like some sort of time constraints. So we're like, okay, we pushed it a month. They pushed it back, and all five of us were like, fuck, they didn't get the hint the first time. Now we got to do this again. I know, yeah. and because I changed everything, I think I had to pay like five hundred more dollars. This is trip is costing so me more money on the to record, try to get my friend. Let me just on the record, I told Max to move it to the end of July, and I would go. Max moved it to July seventh which is not the end of July. It's, first of all, it's July 11th. Whatever, I'm just saying. I said in July. We're going July, for Taylor's birthday. I know. I'm, I'm going to, I think I'm, I might go. Anyways, what about um, your Cancun? When you go on vacation, yeah. what's your mindset on vacation? Are you someone that like, do you have a budget when you go on vacation? I mean, within reason. No, I would say no, but like within reason. Like if I'm in Cancun and they're like, hey, you want to go on a yacht for the day for $2,000? Like, okay, that sounds cool. But I'm also not like, oh, let me buy a Rolex for 50 grand in the Caymans. Like, no, no. I feel like I feel like within reason. Like, if it's a fun trip, I I want a little bit of a budget. Like, I'll look at, hey, I'm going to Cancun. Flights, everything's gonna cost me five grand. I'm trying to keep it around that number. But also, if there's something really cool, like I'm not gonna not go. Do you do you? I think I'd ever be like, oh, you're going on four wheelers. I'm I can't afford that today. I'm not gonna go. Like, do you analyze money? Like, when you get to where you're going on vacation, all the money that you've spent to that point, that it, that it's that's old money. You can't be like, now this trip, if it was five thousand to get here, and then the next thing is two, be like this trip's seven thousand, or is that now two thousand dollars? I would seven. I would say seven. I usually at least like to have some kind of idea how much money I want to spend on a trip. Like, if we go to Disney World, I'm assuming six grand a person. Okay. Which is high, but like to do it right, probably. Now on this up, vacation, up. I'm going back to the same resort that I've been to 
last time with Taylor yeah. about about a year ago. Do you are you someone that wants because like if you if you had a good time at a place, yeah. do you go back to the same place or you go? I want to see what else is out there because um, you risk. You risk. It's it's like I love this flavor of drink. I'm at the store. Let me try something else. And you get it. You get in your car. You drive. You open it. And you're like, this sucks. I now think, I'm stuck with this drink. I think for full on locations, I'll I like to switch it up. So like I've been to Colorado so many times at this point, like next year, if we go snowboarding, I'm like, let's go to Utah or let's oh. go somewhere different. But if you go to Colorado, you're going to the I'm same. Probably if I go to Colorado, I'm probably doing winter park or Aspen. Like, I think for you, like, you know, that resort's good. Like it's, it's not going to be much different between resorts. Like you're good. But if I were you, I wouldn't go back to Cancun. I'd go to Turks and Caicos. I don't know. Another Island somewhere. Well, I can't even get my friends to take a two hour flight to yeah. Cancun. You think yeah, I can yeah. get them to go to freaking Turks and Caicos? Yeah. No, I'd say for you, like inside the same area, I do the same thing every time. On vacation, you know are, are you a are you a beach or a pool guy? Beach. I don't care about the pool. I got a pool in my backyard. Well, not that's anymore, not the same. Dude. It is the same. Okay, but I'm talking. Pool. I'm talking about a pool at a resort with like a swim up bar. I don't care. I would rather sit by the beach and go in the water. I'm dude, a big. I'm a big water. Like I'm a big ocean guy. Like we're beach. in the Caymans every morning. I get the little flippers and a little snorkel. I go out pretty far. Go look at some stuff. I caught a lobster. Come back. That was a great. That was a wonderful time. I think the beach sucks. I think the ocean sucks. I like the ocean. Like I'll go in it. I'll have fun while I'm doing it. Yeah. I'll be like, Hey, let's go to the beach. But like I would take the pool every time yeah. over. We were, when we were in the Caymans, I was snorkeling, having a great time. And the whole time, every time I come to the surface, I hear Max on the boat, like, come on, we gotta go to the bar. Let's go. And it's just like, bro, shut up. Let me, let me snorkel. Dude, I, I think I, I had a lot of like traumatic, uh, traumatic experiences when I was a kid. And I, I, I swallowed so much, uh, salt water. Why? Because I'm out, I'm, I'm a kid. I'm out in the, the just mouth open. Just sometimes you, sometimes you just swallow water on accident. It hasn't happened to me. You've never swallowed a bunch of salt water on accident. No. Well, it makes you throw up. It's so gross, bro. I've never had that happen. Maybe I've never that, gotten salt water in my mouth. I've never just, like swallowed salt water. You've never swallowed salt water. No. What? Not mass amounts. Yeah. Maybe I, a little bit got in my mouth one time, but like. No, and then like, and, and then when I, it, no, it's not an accident, man. And then when you go to like, you go to the cooler and stuff and you get like your sandwich out and get then you get, and there's it. like sand on yeah. it and stuff. I will say I don't, I'm not a fan of sand, but that's what the pool's for. You do the ocean, you do that and you step in the pool and then you go back to your room. Two fun facts about the, uh, the, the beach. Okay. Yeah. Sand is just tiny little rocks. Yeah. I remember in middle school, or maybe elementary school, someone told me sand was fish poop. And for a long time, I believed it. Someone at some point told me that like all sand was just fish poop. And I was like, okay. That Similar to fish poop. Reasonable. Did you know that, do you know why the ocean is salty? Because of salt. Where does the salt come from? from like the salt flats at the bottom, the bottom of the ocean of salt in it? It's whale semen. No, it's not. Shut the whale fuck. semen. No, no, it's not. No. Dude, have you seen? I'm going to look that up. But do, you, right. do you know how big whales are? Is that what you watch at night? That's what you go whale hub imagine the loads that these whales are just splooging. probably intense yeah yeah you think that accounts for all of the salt in the sea do you know how long whales have been around <laughs> okay all do right. you know how many loads they're blowing all right agree to disagree on this one so i'm gonna assume there's like salt flats same as in the desert under the ocean and that's how it got what's a salt flat you know like in the desert like the big salts the salt the salt flats <laughs> it's just salt in the ground. No, in the desert, there's there's only pyramids and so things where we get salt from. Don't we like mine salt out of the ground? I get it from the store. Well, I go to put it in the store for you. I think mine it out of the ground. I'm I assuming it's under the ocean and then it gets into the into the water. Dude, the ocean is something that like I I don't trust the ocean. Is a lake over a salt flat salty? Can that happen? Let me ask you this, Joe. Are there any are there any whales in the lakes? No. no, no, there's, it can't be. Guess what? Yeah. Is the lake salt water? No, well, I think, a, I think a lake could be salty. What salty lake you swimming in? I don't know, but I, I mean, it sounds reasonable. If there was water on top of a salt flat, it would be salty water. Next time you go to a lake, someone's gonna be like, y'all are fucking idiots. Ne I, I want, I want to know the next time you go to a salty lake. Yeah. Either I mean, there could be sharks in freshwater. That can't happen. Or brackish water, technically, but sometimes fresh water. Like bull sharks can go upstream. Like there's a lot of people get attacked by bull sharks in rivers where you wouldn't even think there's a bull shark. The fuck is a bull shark? A little aggressive asshole. It's like the highest testosterone animal in the world. Are you like Basically secretly me. really into sharks? I, I'm into all animals. I love all. If you ever do like animal trivia, I'm I'm winning it 100. percent Big animal guy. Like marine, like all of it. Like rep. I love reptiles. I used to have pet python. Yeah, I have a pet python. I was a weird kid. 
He's a trouser snake. Mine was a reticulated python. But yeah, I was I was the weird kid in like middle school that had like snakes, Bro, and like I, lizards and shit. I'm not gonna lie, I I have never understood yeah. wh- how wh- how why people have amphibians. Are that what they are? Amphibians? What? A snake? Is an amphibian it's a, a reptile? You, <laughs> amphibian would be like a we, that's with web to, web feet. That's web feet or a frog. Okay, amphibians. I think I think webbed feet mean amphi. And am I, I saying it right? That's right. Am, amphibian. Amphibian. I've never understood and why frogs people frogs and salamanders. I mean, that's it. And like newts. Why do people have lizards and snakes as pets? It's a reptile. I had lizards and snakes. I why? Lizards, I, I snakes. can't wrap my head around it. I, I was always just, I liked snakes. I always had a huge. I was you, a big like. I grew up watching Steve Irwin like every single day. So I was always that's so cool. So I used to catch little snakes in the backyard, and I got a little python. I had a couple. I had like a. I, you're not gonna know what I'm saying. I had a couple different pet pythons growing up. One of them got big. One was like seven, eight feet, and I had to get rid of it because it got like too big. I didn't really know what I was buying, so I bought a reticulated python, which is like the world's largest snake. Yeah, almost like my wiener. But I, it started getting bigger and bigger. So I'd, I feed it rabbits. And yeah, was, yeah. I had to feed this thing rabbits, and then it started getting to the point where like it's not safe to handle by myself. Like once they get over like 12 foot, you're not supposed to handle them by yourself. Cause if it decides to wrap you up, like you can't get it off of you. Like if it wraps around your neck, you, you're not strong enough to get a 12 foot. I could, I could, I could get it. You're not, you have no, even when it was seven foot, like it, dude, the amount of strength a Python has is you have no clue. Bro. If you but think that a snake is stronger than these fucking you have, you forearms. You have no idea, dude. It's like just a 16 foot reticulated Python. You it, have no chance. It's just a slippery no, little snake, no, dude. No, it's like it's a garden not. hose. But anyways, yeah, it started getting too big for me to safely handle it. It got to the point where like, I have no friends that wanted to come over to play with my snake. So I, I just like, it, it wasn't gonna make sense for me to keep this thing. You don't play with those animals. It, it was tame. I mean, you can only tame them so much. But it like, doesn't know I, who you are, Joe. I got bit like once and I had that snake for like three years. That snake had no idea who you were. It no, didn't care no, no, about no, you. But it also never tried to attack me. Like it was this might thing. This might be hypocritical of yeah. me, but like I look at animals like dogs and stuff and I'm like yeah. domesticated. They should be around yeah. people. You can't okay? domesticate a snake. I, I think lizards, iguanas, all They're, that shit. No, no, here, they, they, they are supposed to be out in the wilderness. I've seen it's some like It's like someone's a pet bear. What are you doing? Yeah, it's an exotic animal. I think there are people that, I, I enjoy exotic animals. I thought it was really cool to own an exotic animal, but you I have just, no desire to own like a bear or something like that. You just look at it in its little case and you're like, oh yeah. I, yeah, I would love to have and a chameleon. F- I would love nothing more than have like a really cool like terrarium with an a, a chameleon in it. Do you did you feed your snake little mice? Yeah, mice Li- live into rats and l- bunnies. Live mice? No, nah, they're frozen thawed. But I did have one that wouldn't eat frozen thawed, so that one I had to feed live. I couldn't do that. Live a mouse? Yeah, mm. I couldn't do a rabbit. The rabbits are always frozen thawed. I, there's no way I could kill a little bunny. Bunnies are too cute. I feel like I'm such a hypocrite because like I I, I couldn't do that, but like I'll eat meat. I could with a mouse. I'm okay. If you said Max, go kill that chicken and cook yeah. it for dinner tonight, I'd be like, nah. I'm the same way. I went bird hunting once. I, I wouldn't go bird. I've not. I've, I've yeah. So you like you you kill these little dove, which like doves are kind of cute. You kill yeah. a dove, you shoot it, but like the buckshot doesn't kill it, so it falls to the, to the thing, and then you gotta go get it, and you gotta like wring its neck to kill it. And what like, I dude, I what you, I did one of them, and I'm like, I, I don't think I can do this. What do you mean wring its neck? And like grab by the head and fucking snap its neck. Cause like the buck, or I mean, you can just put it in your bag, but it's going to be bleeding out, suffering the whole time. So it's better to just like, it's fucked up. I as, feel really bad. I hate hunting. I hate killing animals in general. As much as I am a meat eater, and I think yeah. it's just because I was raised on it, right? I no, think I'm it, with you. Is it, but like I, I, and again, you can call me a hypocrite. Beta. Yeah, I, I will not go hunting. I will, I will not like unless unless these deer are like becoming zombies and taking over my land and are going to kill me. Okay. Okay. But what like to eat, like, could you kill a cow if it meant that you and Taylor got to eat meat for the next six months? Yes. If I, what if it if, wasn't, no, 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 not life and death. Like you go vegetarian or you kill this cow and stay meat eaters for the next six months. You're going to live either way. Could you do it? Like, would you do it actually? I don't think I could. You would go vegetarian for six months instead of killing that cow. Yeah. I, 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 think I, I would I, kill the cow. I, I like meat too much. I I'd feel really bad for a couple of days. I'd probably be very upset about it, but like it, I'm going to eat meat. Bro, my friend, uh, my friend who helped me, Josh, who helped me build Jeeps back when I was younger, yeah. he would like him and his dad would go like deer hunting. Do you know, do you know what, what you do to yeah, get oh, yeah, the deer? They hang them yeah. up. They hang them from like a tree. They skin. Yeah. They, they drain the blood. They're hanging upside down. They skin them. They pull the skin off of them. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, they're dead at that point. You're no lives, way could I do that. You want to? But I'll I, eat a hamburger. I don't want to talk I don't about know. it on this podcast. But like feral hog hunting, we did that one time. I that, that scarred me for a while. That might be the most fucked up thing I've ever seen. I didn't even go. It got to the point where they were telling us what they were going to do, and I was like, I'm just going to stay at the cabin. I'm, I have no desire to go on this hunt. They bring dogs out. These dogs aren't like our dogs. These dogs aren't like you like pet them and stuff. These are working dogs. Like they are snapping at each other, trying to eat each other. They go. They have like. They have like some dogs that corner the pigs and then a big pit bull comes in and grabs a pig and, and the, do- the, the dogs ground. will have like Kevlar vests on. Oh yeah. So the- and they die all the time. Like even the guys are telling us like, Oh, we lost one last night. And it's like, they, they talk about dogs. Like they are a fucking item. Like there's, there's no, and to be fair, like these dogs are like, you, you don't like I walked up and I was like, Oh, he's so cute. And they're like, bro, stay the fuck away. Like these dogs will fuck you up. And I'm like, okay, it was, it was great. And they're talking about, Oh, like to train them. We like cut the tusks out of the pig, like DT the, t- the pigs, but keep them alive so we can teach the puppies how to attack. I'm like, this is some hillbilly ass. I mean, the guys that showed up were like <laughs> overalls, no t-shirt, missing all their teeth. Like it is some backwoods. Is it? It's I, fucked I, up. I understand. And again, there's like, there's many scenarios of this, yeah. but I understand hunting for food or like yeah. killing animals for survival, for food. Like it just, I'm not getting into the whole fucking topic, yeah. okay? But I cannot wrap my head around hunting for sport. Or hunting exotic. That always pissed me off when I see like oh, famous yeah. New York I mean, doctor I, kills a giraffe. And I'm like, for what? Like, why did you kill the giraffe? I, yeah, I feel like that goes without saying. Yeah, That's like yeah, ridiculous yeah. shit that like I can't I'm do. I'm cool with it. If you have a bow, like if you go bow hunting, I what? feel like it's a little bit more like, like bow and arrow. I feel like that's a little bit more like you're hunting. The guys that put a deer feeder out and then lay there and wait for the deer to come eat and then blow their heads off. I'm like, that's not, you're not really doing anything. You're just sitting there with your boys drinking a beer, getting ready to blow a deer's head off. The guys that get a bow and arrow and go like track an elk and like go, I'm, that seems more. Joe, if you have to hunt an animal, why would you not use technology? That's where I think it's fucked up. It, I think it, if you're going to hunt, hunt. If you're going to just sit in a blind and wait for one to walk by no, and blow its head off, I th- that ain't really hunting. I not think really doing anything. I think if you're hunting, because you're going to eat the food of the animal. Yeah, but none of these people need to do that. Yeah. And I, 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 just, I, just, I just can't wrap my head yeah. around. I cannot. I will. I don't support, which is I eat meat. Yeah. But I. Oh, I love Dove. A little bacon wrapped Dove with some no, cream I cheese and jalapenos. No, but, but, delicious. But, but, yeah, I did. But I feel I just, real bad killing them. Mm, no, I'll, I'll never go. I'll never go hunting ever, yeah. ever, ever, ever. You're not not going to have dude in a Kevlar vest go take down some, some pigs. Nope. That was, I'm telling you, that was the most wild experience I've ever had in my life. That was like, you ever seen without a paddle? Y- yeah. A long like time Like the ago. two guys up in the hill. Like that's basically who was like leading the hunt. It was, it was weird. Not a fan. I felt bad. We had a Russian dude with us that came from Russia. He has no clue. So he's sitting there the whole time, like jaw dropped. Just like, what, what do y'all do here? He was so like the culture shock was so intense. I, I felt bad for him. Cause he's just looking at us like, this is what y'all do. And we're all like, no, like, it was one of the guys at the cabin with us put the hunt together. He was the one that's like, oh, it's a hog hunt. We didn't know what that meant until they showed up and we're like, okay, this is some wild shit. Anyways, yeah. Nope. Not nope. a big hunter either. I, I'm not, but I will eat meat. I'm not the kind of guy that like, I don't see a video where it's like, oh, look how brutal they are to these cows or whatever. Like it upsets me. I get mad, but I'm not like, I'm not eating meat for six months. Like I'm, I'm going to go eat meat. Let me it ask, sucks, but like it's, th- it sucks. Th- th- this is not where I thought this podcast was going to go at yeah. all. But if someone said to you, how are you fine with eating meat, but you will not kill an animal? Yeah. What, what is your answer to that? I don't have, I, mean, one. I don't have one that way. would like suffice for someone. Well, I mean, I, if I don't eat the meat. There's still, so the argument is usually like, oh, if, if we all stop eating meat, they'll stop killing the animals. But like in reality, that complex has already started. It's way too big of an industry to stop. So like in reality, every person that's like, I'm not eating meat, the meat still goes to the supermarket. It just goes bad. And like at that point, you're wasting the meat. That's, I tell vegetarians that all the time. I'm like, you not eating a steak is not making them kill one less cow. They're still killing the cow. It's just now no one's going to eat that steak. I, I don't know. I, I mean, it's a, I guess a touchy thing, but I don't, I, I, I will I, always eat meat. I can't not. It's too good. I don't have an answer for it. I could live on seafood. I could, I could, I, if I had to, I could go strictly seafood. I can eat salmon every night. Why are people more fine with being a pescatarian? Because fish don't have feelings. Kurt Cobain, dude. The argue, I think there's some scientific, and I don't know if this is real or not. There was some scientific. You're telling me when the fish it. is laying on its side and well, it's just it's like. A fish's nervous system, I don't think is complex enough to feel pain the same way we do. I think the argument is they don't process pain the same way that did, did we do. Did someone meet a fish and ask them? That's my thing. It's like, I don't know how we know that, but that's usually the like argument for fish are okay because they don't feel pain the same way that a cow does. I guess the line but, would be like, if there's a spider and you step on it and you feel nothing, like, yeah. why do you feel nothing about 
a, a ant that you kill? Is it because it's small? Is it because it's an insect? I don't know. I wouldn't. I would if there was a frog. I wouldn't. Oh fuck no! I'd be pissed if you stepped on a frog. Yeah, I wouldn't do. But like, you step on a cockroach. I'm like, all right, that's fine. It's a complicated topic. But I'm even, dude. I'm the kind of guy like if there's a spider in my house, like I'll try to get it out of my house without killing it. Like I will go out of my way, like get on a piece of paper and take it outside. Like I really rarely am like I'm killing that thing in my house. Here's like, here's the two things. Honestly, I think snakes fall in this category too. You would uh, kill a snake. I've never had to kill a snake. Dude, I remember my grandma back in the day, dude, I specifically remember this huge ass snake. I'm assuming my grandma came out of the house with a shotgun and shot this huge snake and just blew it in half. And she was like, it was like nothing. Like it was a a giant snake. And she's like, hold on. Yeah. Shot it with a shotgun. Anyway. um, No, I've never had to, I've I've never, I've never had to experience a snake. You haven't had any snakes in your pool? In my pool? Yeah. No. You live on a... I'm surprised because you live somewhere. There's a lot of snakes in that lake. No, I've never had to like interact with a snake. Yeah, okay. Um, but bees, all bees... bees are really good. Be, okay, I, I know. Yeah. But bees and spiders, I don't... And, and caterpillars. It's only caterpillars. No, I'm not, not, I'm not saying I go out and fucking and like kill all these, these insects or whatever. Mission. No, but I'm just like, I don't have the time or the knowledge to, de- to decipher in the moment... Is this a poisonous one or a good one? Okay, well, I can it, help you out with one of these things. I don't think in the state of Texas we have any caterpillars that are like going to kill you. I took you, a picture you're of not supposed uh, to touch them, like the little furry black ones. But like we don't have any caterpillars where like they're going to bite you. It's, it's basically just that they have like little poisonous quills on them. No caterpillars are biting people or attacking people. Okay. If you see a caterpillar, you can pretty safely like put it on a stick and get it out of the way. It's not going to fucking jump on you and, and beat your ass. But if you take a spider is a little bit more touchy. Spiders in your house, you take it and put it outside. Guess what? That spider is now just going to build spider stuff around your house. Probably, but it eats a bunch of other insects you don't want. I do. There are a lot of spiders. Spiders and bees are actually really good for like everything. I don't know if there's enough time to tell you the traumatic experiences I had as a child with bees, bro. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the story. I'm going to tell you the story. I have a similar one to go for it. When I was, I, so I used to get stung by bees all the time as a child. Wasps. All I don't know what they I got, were. I got fucked with something wasps with all wasps. Time. Yeah, there was one time I was with my my neighbor, and now keep in mind, um, I lived out in like the middle of the woods, Same. right? So my neighbor was like a mile and a half away from me, uh, and I would literally like run through the woods get to his house. His name was Micah, okay? And we were over there, and there was a picnic table down his like three mile driveway. Picnic table. Yeah. We were down there, jumping around on the picnic table. Turns out, under that picnic table was a giant hornet's nest yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. And I got stung. I mean, shit, Joe. I think I had like 20 stings, like yeah, 20. Yeah, yeah. And I and I remember us just blood curdling screaming. His mom runs down the driveway. He was like, what is going on? We're screaming. She's starting to get stung. We are running all the way back to the house and just getting stung like in yeah. my in my ear, like yeah, yeah. Uh, like my eyelids. And I had this, it was like, I had like 20 stings, bro. Like it was like tr- literally traumatic. Yeah. And because of that moment, I, you do. F- yeah. When a wasp flies by, I do notice that you like run. Like you're like not even, I haven't got stung in like with a, it. probably well over a decade or so. So I'll keep it very short, but we used to play hide and seek in the dark outside. Cause we're little idiot kids. Well, flash I lived in the forest too. No, like we just, so I was hiding in my friend's like trash can area. That was a fenced off area. And I was like, crouched down backing into the fence and I guess there was a, a hornet nest in the fence. So I literally backed into it. I put my back directly into it, got stung like 15 times. And then I, I remember I ran screaming from his house all the way to my house. I didn't even go into his house. I went all the way home screaming. It was like quarter mile, just fucking hauling ass screaming. We, and ever since I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't mess with wasps. We had similar. Oh yeah. It was a bad time. I got stung by wasps all the time. Cause we lived out in the country and I had to mow the grass and there's a fence. And every time the mower get too close to the fence, the hornets would come fly down and try to kill you. Yeah, I got stung probably like once a week. Well, for me, it's just like if a, bi- a bee flies near me, it's not like I'm going to like, you're my mission to die. I'm bees just, are usually pretty cool. I don't think a bee's ever just like randomly flew by and stung somebody. I mean, it probably has happened, but I don't think normally. Like a wasp, like a hornet will come after you. I don't think bees really like come after you unless you fuck with unless them. Unless it looks like a bumblebee to me, they all look like wasps to me. Yeah, they're not. Like if, if there's a giant nest yeah. on your house, do you just assume it's a, do you get the, the bee spray and spray it? I mean, no matter what, it's not bee spray. You would know there's a big difference. Bee, bee colonies are massive. There's never like a little group of bees. It's like you thousands of bees are at your house. I only know the mud dopper little things I get yeah, and, and a little a hornet and a little. Yeah, you're talking about hornet's nest. No, mud doppers are not no, no, hornets. No, the thing that you're saying you're spraying is a hornet's nest. Right. Or one of the wasps. 
It's not a bee net. You don't have bees. I think your, your issue is misplaced with the bees. The bees are fine. I think you're mad at wasps. No, no, I, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen a, I've, I've never seen like a Beehives, or a you, hive. Would, you would know. You have not had a beehive at your house. No, I've, I've never yeah. seen a beehive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anytime there's like a tiny little thing, that's it's wasps. Wasp. Yeah. So those ones, is that widely accepted? They can go away. Uh, I is don't it, know Is it true wasps that do, wasps but don't do anything? I, you might be right. I don't know. I have a, I think you're right. I think they might do some stuff, but not anywhere near like as beneficial as bees or something. I think they eat other insects, but wasps are brutal. Praying mantises are brutal. I think I think wasps are the ones that they can just keep stinging. Whereas yeah, yeah, they don't I think, die. I think it's a bee dies because it pulls their insides yeah, yeah, yeah. out. Right? No, a wasp has multi. You got reload on that thing. Why, when bees were designed, why was that? They're like, you have one safety well, feature, and if you use it, you're done. Crazier than that. A lot of people don't know this, but like bees don't live very long. I think they're different based on their classes. So there's like worker bees and like guard bees and stuff. But I think like the average worker bee, I want to say they live for like 72 hours. I think like from the time they're born to the time they die is like three days or maybe it's like five. It's like a week. It's very short. Like even if they don't sting, they just, that's their lifespan. I think like the queen can live up to a year and then some of the other ones in between can live like a couple months. I might be wrong. Someone could comment down below, but I'm pretty sure your average bee only lives for like a week. Do you think that bees, you know, in like a interstellar when they go to the planet and they've been there for like, and it's like actually a long time. time. Do you think bees for three days, they're like, so. God, I've lived such a long, good life. I'm ready to go. Know. I've served my queen yeah. or they're just like, I don't know. That's a good question. Does time move differently yeah. for insects? It's relativity, right? That is a topic for another This podcast. is a wild podcast. I feel like we talked about nothing but a bunch at the same time. Look, I, you know, Joe, when I have you on, like, I think random topics, unless there's crazy current events, and be, and because these episodes don't go up, like, it's not like, yeah. Joe, something happened last night, dude, we got to put a podcast out right now, we got we to gotta talk about it right now, it's more just like, yeah, it is kind of random yeah. shit. Honestly, the submarine thing's the only thing that has happened recently. Oh, and your girlfriend just told me about some fake chicken thing that was approved while the submarine thing was going on, kind of went under the radar. Fake chicken? Yeah, U.S. A. No. USDA. USDA approved, I guess today or yesterday, they approved lab-grown chicken as edible. Like you can officially sell lab-grown chicken in the U.S. legally. Not a chicken grown in a lab that was then killed, like literally lab-grown. Like the chicken breast is made from cells in a lab. It just comes out as a chicken breast. I don't care. I don't that care. It's not from a chicken. I mean, it's lab-grown. So like you could go to, technically speaking, you could go to Chick-fil-A five okay. years from now and get a chicken sandwich, but it ain't real chicken. But you don't know that. I don't think they have to disclose if it's not real. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's I'm, a duck, I don't dude. know if I want to eat something grown in the lab. I don't know. I guess that's a weird, it will be a, the vegetarian's happiest moment ever though, because if this works out, technically they can do this with all meats. So, I mean, technically all meats could be lab grown and now animals get to just. Yeah, bro. bro I, I'm not like with the whole, an, this whole topic has got about animals, dude. Like. I'm, I don't eat a steak because I'm like, I love like the fact that the cow died to give me this. I'm like, no, but would you eat, do you eat fake meat? I would. No, would you right now? Like the tofu version of a steak or whatever, like the beyond meat patties. Do you get those? If, to be honest, I grew up, my dad actually got these things. They're called Boca burgers. Mm. They're a brand. And I used to eat them a lot as a kid. And I thought they would taste amazing. I'm not someone like it just, it can't kind of taste like a steak. It can't kind of tastes like chicken it needs to be one for one exact and if you can give me that i'm not gonna be like apparently they can yeah but see like i'm not gonna like at the moment i'm not gonna like go out of my way to make sure that i only eat this one because it tastes the same but i'm gonna go like i'm just like look like the convenience of everything yeah so but i just worry about eating something grown in a lab like what if it it's synthetic like what if i'm eating i don't know you know what dude i'm shoot my ass up with synthetic TRT all the time. So maybe I'm a hypocrite on that one too. I would something about the chicken being grown in a lab from cells just makes me not think I should eat that. Or maybe I shouldn't be the first person. Maybe other people should eat this for a while. Bro, the, the, the food that we're already eating is already injected with a bunch of yeah, shit. Yeah, but at least it's a real animal. Like a chicken breast came from a chicken. I don't know if I like that it came from a mushy bag of cells that but was here's, impressed here, okay, No, but here's the thing is if you're eating the chicken because of, I'm, I'm assuming a couple things. Well, I'm taking like the convenience of I, I can get it anywhere. Taste and texture are the only two that matter, right? Taste and texture and the nutrients. No, because you can get the nutrients from other stuff. I mean, we've had that for a while. Where you I'd can get say, the but, but I'd say those are the three. Like I eat chicken because it's high in protein, low in, low yeah, in that. You get a protein shake. I'm just saying the nutrients thing has been replaced for a while. You don't yeah, have but, to no, have but, but, the but the food. No, okay. I'm, yes. Okay. Yeah. If those three things 
I don't care. I don't care that it came from a, an See, animal. I do. I, do. I, I want natural stuff. I don't think I want lab grown cells in my chicken. Yeah, but you're just thinking about it all weird. I am, just yeah, don't yeah, think yeah, about yeah. it. Well, and I, I told, again, we were having this conversation before this. I'm like, I love McDonald's chicken nuggets. I could eat a 20 count yeah, of chicken nuggets. Like, right. oh, I don't know what the hell is in those things. No, I, no, no I, th- I think they came out like they're real. It's, it's real chicken. It's a pink mush that are, I don't know what the fuck it is, but like I'll eat those all day. Those are great. Yeah, but here's the thing. If the, if the FDA was like, hey, yeah. it wouldn't be the USDA, you know, USDA, FDA, whatever. whatever. Yeah, okay. uh, Food and Drug Administration and then United States Drug Administration. I don't know. Uh, if if they're like, hey, this is safe. We have done all the research. U.S. Department of Agriculture. Whatever. That's what it was. If, 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 if it's completely safe, yeah. you're not going to have any bad effects from this. And it looks like a chicken. Okay. It tastes exactly 99.9999999% the same, looks the same, tastes the same, same nutrients, they same told texture. Us that I don't give a shit about the vaccine. I'd be I don't know if I trust the USDA. I don't know if I trust the government to tell me what is and isn't safe to put in my body. You know what, Joe? Well, I should just, um and I know I sound like some conspiracy, no, but I'm just no, like I'm, there have been things that we have said. There's been vaccines in the past where they're like this is safe, don't worry about it. And then fuck, smoking for a long time was considered safe. I just don't know if I trust the government's opinion on some of these like brand new things that they don't really know. I know, but I'm I'm just putting the example of let's say it is. If it's safe, I don't give a shit. Whatever. Yeah. Cool. You know, I uh, this is getting long, but I really want to talk about let's this. Let's go, dude. Okay. No one's gonna be mad. No one's gonna watch this you, anyways. Uh, you, you, the vaccine. I yes. I've been wanting to kind of talk with someone about this, and I feel like you're the the person to talk I'm about. Not the person to talk to about. We're gonna briefly do it because I'm anti-vax. I'm, you are. Yeah, I'm a country boy. Here's here's the thing. When the whole vid came out, and now I mean I, I don't I don't know enough about everything. It, yeah. What it turns out that it was made in a lab or yes. something. Okay, it's pretty safe to say that. Okay, but but I don't know what that means. Which is wild because if you said that for a very long time, you were shut down and kicked off a platform and everything else. And this, now it's like, oh, oops, it was right. We'll let you talk about it now. It's well, like, like I guess the the argument is like, oh, we didn't know. S- sorry for getting so mad at you. We're sorry so, because I mean by by my own. People, yeah. I'm like, I was getting wrecked that I never got uh, the vaccine. Yeah, you did which, get it. Yeah, I got, yeah. I got, I got the the, I got all of them. I never did. I got a lot the, of people are still to this day. People are like, oh, you're fucking anti vax But I'm like, look, I'm good. In the event that in 20 years from now you're watching TV and there's an ad like, did you or a loved one get the vaccine? And 20, I'm good. I got to worry about this shit. I'm fine. I I had the vid twice and I was totally fine. Yeah. No, I I got I. Got it. And no, but I got all the vaccines. I got yeah. all the boosters. Yeah. I got the actual ones because people were literally r- ripping me apart yeah. for not. And again, I'm more like, hey, in my mind, the reason I got it wasn't because like I am a drone. I must follow what yeah. the government says. I'm more like, hey, there's clearly something going on. Oh, this vaccine solves that. It didn't though. Oh, yeah, but I was like, I know. Did you were told it was? Everyone was told it was. You get it was you, sold. You, you, Have you seen the real? You get like the hepatitis shot or something. Someone's gonna comment and be like, "You're so uninformed," blah blah blah. But like, you can look this shit up. If go to the real and type in every time it was said the vaccine cures. I don't know if it was said cures, but you, it was said that you cannot get COVID with the vaccine. And everyone disputes no, this now. I, There's all these times people are like it was never said. There is hundreds of videos of Fauci and Biden and every big leader, even Trump saying, if you get the vaccine, you won't get the vid. And now all of a sudden, no one ever said that. What are you talking about? That was never presented that way. It's like, there's evidence. And then people will still in the comments be like, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. It's like, it, there's video evidence of this. I guess I'm just more like, I'm stre- I, I don't like live my life super stressed out right now because of it. But the fact that it was so like, essentially it, they made it yeah. seem like you're a piece of shit. If you, oh, you um, pit, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you don't do it, it divided the freaking nation. Well, was, you're, you're killing other people. And now it turns out they found out that there was no reduction in transmission from vaccinated or not. So the whole argument that I was hurting other people by not getting it was not even a true thing. But for two years, people were told to hate anyone that didn't get the vaccine. Right. But well, now it's like, we're sorry. We're all good <laughs> we're now. Sorry. Well, let's, let's forget about that. Don't worry the, about it. The, the only part that stresses me out when I think about it, yeah. and I don't think about it, I don't think about it that much. You have little is, microchips in your blood now? Well, here's the thing. I got all the stuff, and like I'm like, okay, maybe this, maybe uh, let's say in the scenario of like, hey, we just didn't know, whoopsies. But the fact now that I don't even think you can get those vaccines anymore. I think you. They, they, they like pulled them off, bro. I think bro. you can. 
I, I don't know. know. Look, when someone's offering you a hundred dollars to get vaccinated, you know there's an issue. Like I there got, was ads that were like, get a hundred dollars at your local clinic when you get vaccinated. I'm like, why are you paying me to get vaccinated? Like this doesn't. Yeah, like seem CVS, right. you would get like a five dollar gift card. Well, that for like, the, now we're getting real close to demonetization time here. But like, have you type in like sponsored by Pfizer and watch that video? Every single news organization over the last two years is sponsored by Pfizer. Every news broadcast is like brought to you by Pfizer. Every sports game brought to you by like Pfizer has their hand in everyone, every single news organization, right, left, middle, doesn't fucking matter. Pfizer sponsored something. It's like you want to look at something that like looks bad is like the fact that the company that making the most money off the vaccine was in everything. Government, every storm or force of media, every hospital, everything Pfizer's touching doesn't look good. I just want to know is I got all this stuff. Turns out apparently now they're like, hey, what is it now? Is it like you don't need it or you don't, it don't get it? You don't need it. I don't think it's don't get it. I think so. And I might be wrong on this, but I at think this phase at the now, moment, it reduces your chance of having serious complications from the vid. If you were to catch the vid right now, there's a very low chance that you were going to develop a bad reaction to it. Where if I get it, I can still get pretty sick. So I think the argument is you could get it, I could get it, and I might have a 104 degree fever and want to kill myself, and you might be totally fine. See, I guess in my but, mind, when 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 I was like, hey, you know, contemplating, hey Matt, should I get this? Whatever, that's I, I'm like a logical person. They're like, hey, there's a virus. If you get the vaccine, like you know, it's not going to be as bad, or you're not going to. And I'm so I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. Se- seems like a seems like a logical I don't thing to think do. Anyone that got it, stupid. I think it's very un. I think it's irresponsible the way it was. Sold I got attacked to for everybody. not getting it, and then I got it, and then I got attacked for getting it. Like yeah. you almost, if you if you got it, you almost were like, do I tell people and 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 make the people that are like the anti people with the cards, you know, the people in the airports, like getting in fights. I mean, it literally turned into like a you versus someone else, if depending on your vaccine status. And that's the wild thing. It's like people were alienated. There were people not exaggerating. You can look this up too. There were people recommending that like unvaccinated people were put into camps. That was literally recommended by like city council people and stuff. And like big people, like big influential people. I think Schwarzenegger. It's like cool the giant dude. thing with like, like the army, like the, the, like it's all yeah. gated off. Yeah, like y'all live like here. Check your neck or whatever. Yeah. So like the, they're Arnold. Like as much as I like Arnold, he was on record at one point saying like, you fuck your freedom, get the vaccine. Uh, like remember, he basically was like, that. I don't care about anyone's freedom. Like you do what we tell us. And it's like, that's a very weird thing for, especially someone from like a, I don't think he's from a communist country, but it's just weird that someone like him would have that. It Look, literally turned I, into I like think, a. And, and, and this isn't just talking about that, but I think w- when there's a big situation happening and it's, it's divided, people are on side A or side B. Wh- and, and then it comes out later that it was, Side yeah. A was right or side B was right. No matter which way it goes, yeah. the other people are like, you dumb motherfuckers, I told yeah. you. So I will say. It, it, if it came out the opposite, yeah. then everyone else, like so, it's like you're. Like 2020 this hindsight, world right? sucks, Captain dude. Hindsight over here. To be fair, at the time, no one knew. So from a government perspective, like if this is a mass casualty loss of life event and we don't push this vaccine, like if COVID really does kill, mm-hmm. you have to bleep that out. If they really does kill all these people, I I get they're like, we really need people to be vaccinated because we can't lose half our fucking country. Like, they don't know. And if anything, the issue is the way it was handled probably wasn't the best. And Mm -hmm. now, in 2025, if we have a real pandemic, like a Ebola outbreak or something where it really is killing people, now you're going to have a bunch of people like me that are like, ah, last time we kind of, you know, so now... It, if anything, it fucked us up because now when there is a real pandemic and as we all just learned, we can have pandemics. I don't think up until then, I don't think anyone was worried about a pandemic. And now it's like that shit can happen. Like we can lock down the world for years if that happens. That was a wild time. And we were still living in it. So in the event an Ebola outbreak comes like something that actually does have like a 40 percent mortality rate or something. Now you're going to have all these people that are like, I'm not getting the vaccine if they come up with one. So like, if anything, I feel like now we're just even more fucked because now no one trusts the government. So if something really is like the boy who cried wolf. Yeah. Like they cried wolf on this one. They fucked up a little bit and I think maybe had the wrong intentions. Yeah. And now if we're I not can, in a good spot. I'm not going to say hundred percent, but if something like this happens in the future and they're like, Hey, this is something different. And this time we know a little bit more about it. And this time we have the vax. I'm probably still going to get it. If it's a 40% mortality rate. Yeah. I think I look at it statistically. I was like, at my age, it had, I think the same mortality rate as like the flu. I'll take those odds. I'm cool with that. But if you said there's a 40% chance you're going to die if you don't get the vaccine, like I'll get the vaccine. I'll just see what happens, I guess. Stressful times. That people are going to be mad about that. Someone's going to be like. On which side? People are going to attack me or you. Both, yeah. Both. 
But I'm just waiting, dude. I'm waiting for that late night ad. Like uh, the uh, asbestos ads you no, see? No, what's, it's the, be the, it's, uh, what, what's the, the thing? It's like, do you or a loved one uh, have experience with like melophilioma? Oh, mesothelioma or something? What yes. is that? I no fucking clue. But yeah, like the asbestos stuff. I'm, I'm like, waiting for it. I'm just waiting for that like, did you or a loved one get the vaccine? Like, Or oh. on the flip side, Joe, what if it comes out in a couple years, all of a sudden I can start flying. Superpowers. And I can start being like, you're a giraffe. Or new strain of COOF comes out, way higher mortality rate. You have a little bit of protection. I don't. Takes me out. Because we're not going away. They still have strains floating around. It's just at this point, no one gives a shit. Look, for all y'all that are aware, essentially I have a little fortify and some barrier shield up on my my character right now. What is, oh, okay. That's doing it. Yeah, I don't have any of that. You're a witch, dude. You wouldn't understand my barbarian fortify <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I'm all right. Uh, yeah, I think on that one, it's going to be a... An interesting topic to see what will be the... From the animals to hunting to Max saying that he smacks bees away from him. Like, so what am I supposed to do if 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 I'm seeing a bee? Let's say I can almost, like, I'm seeing it in slow motion. A bee won't sting you unless you're going after them. Okay. A bee can fly by and land on you, and I don't think it'll sting you. I think it'll land on you, and then it'll take off. It only doesn't until it does, bro. That is like, the, there's an alligator in my back. His name is Steve. In my in my back. Steve? Yeah, I named him. Yeah. You know, he, me and him are cool now. Yeah. But I was like, oh... I should get this alligator out of the lake. And some people are like, no, you can. No. I think it has to be a certain size. It's a six and a half foot. Or I don't think it's big enough. I think it has to be a certain size or it has to have caused an issue, which he hasn't. It doesn't cause an issue until it does. I know, but. Why, why don't you throw Senna in the water and see if it's a nice Senna alligator. Would wrestle an alligator to the ground. I'm just like, that I don't out. have, I don't want to figure out if that bee is going to sting me. Self-defense mode, auto mode. Okay. If a bee is coming at me. Like bubble boy. Like just yeah, I'm I'm punching every bee in the face, bro. A hornet, I will give you a hornet. I will mess with it. If a hornet's yeah, coming but, towards me, I'm yeah. I'm but bro, good. what I'm saying is, when it's coming at me, yeah. d- d- am I gonna be like pause? Okay, what, what, are you oh, here with what, all what, bugs? What, or just the, what, what distinct features? No, no, that's not you, a hornet. You can tell you're good. The difference between the two, but not in the time they're are flying you, so fast. Are bro. you the kind of guy like if anything lands on you, you freak the fuck out? Or are you like if a ladybug lands, you're just like, oh, it's a ladybug? Or are you just like anything touches you, you're just swinging? If I'm driving in a bug, I mean, I, I'm gonna cause a ten car pileup because <laughs> I fucking swerve immediately. Oh, bro, yeah, no. I, yeah, if right. if bugs land on me, I'm f- flailing. Yeah, I'm I'm usually pretty good about. I just don't like cockroaches. Wait, so if something random. If a bug, if you were to like a sound a bug is like fzz, like on, on you, would you be like? No, I mean, I probably would like smack it away. No, I don't think I'm swerving I mean, in my car, but like, I mean, I'm immediately just I'm whatever. This could be the the a new bug that gives you magical powers. He is di- he is dying on my neck. I like, assume <laughs> that there's nothing in my car that I didn't see before, so it's probably something chill. Like I assume if there's a giant wasp in my car, I probably saw it before I got in the car. Look, there's a lot of spiders that are around like my house that I'm like, y'all are cool, y'all are eating all those bugs. Look, yeah. we don't have a problem, okay? But if a, I don't have time to decide if a spider's poisonous or not. No, a spider jumps on me, I'm freaking out a little bit. I don't like spiders. I hate I, spiders. Are like another thing that I'm not a huge fan of. <laughs> It's all those legs, dude. All those Maybe. eyes. I don't know what it is. Well, Black Widow. When I was little, do was spiders have? Do spiders have wieners? I mean, they have to have sex somehow, right? Do animals? Ha- do do insects have Does wieners? Dude, have a wiener. Uh, dude has a. Fucking, I mean, I. Dude has a unit. Some. Oh God, see, that's one I don't know. Some insects can like clone themselves. Some animals can do that. I think there's like certain lizards and stuff that can do that too. What does that have to do with their wieners? They all. I don't think all insects like mate i think some do though i think some definitely do i don't think it's the same way that we do but i think they do have to have a male and a female to hmm i'm sorry i don't know which way they identify two bugs have to do some stuff to yeah bug bug wiener sex is how we're gonna are some animals that can i think seahorses are one like flip no yeah seahorses are no clownfish a clownfish can go from being a male to a female depending on its environment. Like if a, if there's a bunch of girl clownfish, I think one of them can turn into a male to help the other ones procreate. How does that happen? Look it up. I don't know, but I think clownfish is one of the ones that can do that. There's some animals that can like switch and then there's some animals that can get themselves pregnant. Like there's some animals that by themselves, they can lay eggs and have babies without another that's, animal. That's Mother Mary. That's but it's like cloning. They like clone themselves into- Inside of them? Yeah, I think maybe like cuttlefish or something. There's, there's certain animals that can do that. <laughs> cuttlefish. Cuttlefish? <laughs> Look it up, dude. We should have a nature podcast. Get a whole little nature thing here. and Big big nature guy. You know what I really want to talk about in the next episode yeah, is I want to... Uh, 
not only our outdoor adventure thing, like I want to walk okay. through, but I want, I think we should do a zombie, like a zombie, not like into the world, but like zombie, like what, like what do you actually, like zombies are coming. I'm so, so like, I, I want to know the exact plan. I know. I don't want to, cause I kind of have plan, one in my head, but as I'm moving, I am realizing that like I am, if there's another pandemic, I'm fucked. I have like four water bottles and like a bag of cheese. Like I have nothing in my fridge. I'm very not prepared for the end of the world. Zombie apocalypse happens right now. I have a lot of ammo and guns, but like I have no food. I have no yeah, water. Bro, we I should have no gas in my truck. Like I'm, I'm fucked. We should talk about like apocalyptic times in the next one. I would be a good guy to know for the gun side of it. Yeah, put the bullets in, yeah, I press like the I trigger, and it goes boom. Some shit popped off a while back, and I ended up with like four thousand rounds of four five five six. I have a lot of ammo for an AR. I don't know what that means. I could keep us safe for a long time, but I need I need people like you to give me food. I'll trade you my. I have a lot of sour strips. I don't know how and protein powder. That. That's a, it, yeah, that's a good good topic for the next one. If people still want to have you back, so Let's make sure it. you smash that thumbs up button. I'm going to put Joe's... Uh, you, why, why do I even put your YouTube channel Yeah, at this in point, there? I'm not even planning another video. Until I move, I have no, no plans. Things are bad right now, dude. TRX, eh. Raptor R stuck somewhere. My GT3 RS is being built, but I don't have it yet. What do you think about I built a channel about cars, and I don't, I don't have any cars. It's wild to say. I have a TRX and a GT3, and I'm sitting here like, I don't have any cars. I saw every every like every dickhead. every time I see a GT3, I think of you. Yeah. The, today I saw one zooming by. It was like bright yellow GT3. I R honestly, this sounds really shitty, but like I sometimes realize that like I'm such a dickhead when it comes to that stuff because I'm like now that the three RS is coming, I'm like I'm like oh I don't have a car. I'm so bored. I don't have a car. I'm like I have a GT3 in the garage, but I'm just like ah oh, until the three RS gets here, like I don't have a car. I don't want to go to car shows until my three RS comes in. You, you know the the exact same way that like when I point out a Porsche and go like oh that's so sick, and you go yeah. that, that's the this shitty ass model yeah, of it. Yeah. Like that's not even the good one. Now I know what it feels like because because like when people are like damn dude that's a sick Jeep over there. I'm like this guy he's that is freaking he doesn't even have coil over like that's I go yeah, through the because yeah. I'm like no 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 that's I know what a sick Jeep is and that's not a sick Jeep. You're like, I know what a good Porsche is. That's not a good Porsche. Well, anyways, I'm sitting here saying I have no content. I, I still have two sick cars. I need to make the TRX video. If I you want to do that at some point. If you want to get no views, you can make a video about my big Jeep. I would like to do that too. I have, it's just a time and want to do it thing. Like I have not even just like pumping myself up here. Like I have two McLarens, two Ferraris, like high end Ferraris, uh, a couple other things, your Jeep, oh, my like TRX. access to, yeah. Like I have people like with cars that want to loan them to me to do videos on. And like, I just need to find like the weekend to go. I just don't, especially while it's 104 degrees every day. I have no desire to go do this. Like, and it's kind of like, you know, Diablo just came out. I'm still trying That's to where I'm at right now. I'm level like, up uh, my character. it's not a lack of content. I just don't want to go film it, which makes me sound even worse. But like, mm. well, dude, if this video gets 5,000 likes, Joe, will make won't. a new video. I know it won't. 2,500. That's 2,500. Yeah. We'll go 3,000. No one's making what? it. What am I doing at three thousand? Making a YouTube video. Okay. If if this gets three thousand likes, then before the next episode, you will have four week. You have three weeks yeah. to make a YouTube video. I can do that. He won't do that, but that will wrap up this two hour episode of Don't Be Sour, which I don't even know what the hell we talked about. If you like these random ass episodes with Joe, dude, it, it's it's going to get to a point very soon where it's either going to be like just me or just you and me every week. Cause I, why don't we do someone else? I think me, you and someone else who I don't know. Somebody, anyone I'll get people. I have friends. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Uh, like comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment down below. If you're on any sort of podcast streaming service, give us a five star review. Don't know what it does, but I think it helps. Thank you so much for tuning in. New episodes every, every Monday, 9am Eastern time until there's no more episodes. Eat more sour strips and never forward. Goodbye. I have to pee so bad. Literally two hours. That's the first so. one we didn't drink. That's the first episode I've done where I am totally sober, which is good because I go buy boxes. I got to move. Right.